Hello and welcome to the Mighty 90s Movie and TV Podcast. I'm Dom. And I'm Simon. And tonight's movie for debate is... The Little Giant! <laughs> welcome to the Mighty 90s Movie and TV Podcast, where it's always 10.30 at night, so it's time to grab the snacks from the sweet cupboard move upstairs and settle in as tonight's movie for debate is The Little Giants. Tonight we're really fortunate in that we have one of the cast members joining us on the podcast. We're super excited as tonight we're joined by Marcus Toji, who's one of the Little Giants himself. So let's see what Marcus has to say as we go through all our regular goodness on this episode of the podcast. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. It's Amazing to talk to you. Just to introduce myself, I'm Simon. I'm the guy that's been like messaging you for the last week. Nice to meet you. And then my co-host uh, Dom is here as well. Hello, nice to meet you, Dominic. Okay, Simon and Dominic. Okay. Uh, how how are you doing? Are you all safe in this COVID nineteen difficult situation that we're all in at the moment? Um, yeah, for the most part. You know, um, my wife. Uh, she is working from home. Uh, she was actually starting to work from home before this all happened. And so it was kind of just lucky that she'd already talked to her boss about it. So, you know, it wasn't a, uh, you know, it wasn't something that had a decision had to be made, you know, after the fact. So she's already working from home. But then uh, my family uh, owns a restaurant uh, in Los Angeles. And so, you know, I've been going to work, you know, almost every day. Um, you know, just making sure everything's running and, uh, yeah, just making sure everything's, you know, just, just, uh, chugging along as it's supposed to. Obviously sales are down, but you know, we're, uh, we've been around for quite a while. So we're just hoping that it doesn't get worse. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah. And then I, I, I'm not sure if you guys heard, we, it wasn't a ama- it wasn't like a news worthy, uh, thing, but it, there was an earthquake last night. Yeah, it was it was a small one, but <clears throat> it was uh, close to me. So, you know, at, I think it was like twelve thirty. Just we get this, the whole house shakes just once. You know, just it, it just sounds like a loud bang. And uh, my wife and I wake up, and uh, we're like, "Oh crap!" And so, like, for the next like, you know, I we get our like emergency bags down from the shelves and get our flashlights next to the bed and get clothes ready calm down the cats and then uh yeah we're uh and then we tried to fall asleep for 45 minutes and it was really hard (laughs) after that i i bet i mean not bad enough to have you know a global pandemic happening but also the the earth trying to swallow you as well (laughs) yeah well then my mom my my uh my my wife's mom her whole family is in uh tennessee um and uh tennessee i think last week or the week before had uh tornadoes (laughs) tornadoes <laughs> wow and tornadoes don't typically happen in tennessee either which is even more concerning uh, but uh you know everyone's safe you know but like i said it's just one more thing to deal with on top of a global pandemic <laughs> yeah well we're so we're in the uk we live just outside of london and we're actually having really nice weather at the moment so oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, so Los Angeles, the weather's great, you know, if not for the earthquakes, but, you know. <laughs> well, um, well, thank you so much for joining us. It's, uh, it's a real honour and a pleasure. Uh, the Little Giants is a, a massive film to me and, and a movie that I absolutely loved growing up. Uh, it kind of, it was kind of one of a few movies like The Little Giants, The Mighty Ducks, like these kind of oh, sports uh-huh. movies about uh, kids that weren't necessarily the you know the ones the guys that were picked first they were the guys that were picked last and it really resonated with me because I probably felt a lot like that kid personally there was also a great amount of escapism in these movies where if you were having a bad time or I had a bit of a rough time in high school and so it was kind of like I could come home and watch these movies you kind of feel like you're part of the of the crew you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i think that's why these movies are so important to people and why they have real staying power 
So firstly, would like to thank you from, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably all the way up to about 15, though I wouldn't have said that in public, year old me, um, <laughs> for, uh, you know, for all of that entertainment. And I'm sure this is something you've probably heard a lot over the years. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting, like, where you hear it from, because I remember once, I think I was with uh, Todd Bosley, who was Jake. Was it with him? I was... Oh, you know, when we were kids, you know, a few years after the movie, you know, a lot of kids were still in L.A. You, we'd hang out with each other when they'd be in town. And my one of them and I went to uh, we went somewhere and these big I mean, for us, we were like, you know, 11. These big like football players recognized us and started talking to us. And, you know, they were they were high school students and they loved the movie. And it was kind of one of those things where you're like, yeah, it. it uh it, it wasn't just kids who liked that movie, you know, well, kids, you know, they were older than us, but it was, it was kind of like, you know, they, it, it, it tapped on, uh, it, it hit the right heartstrings, you know, for, for people um, to really kind of get them, you know, I just, uh, to, to remember what it was like to not be the first pick. Exactly that. And we're actually coming from a very unique perspective today because so I loved this movie growing up. Dom and I both born in 87, so, and this came out in, where, in my notes? In 94, yes. 94. So we were, we were seven when this came out, so we were in that perfect sort of, yeah. you know, catchment group. But Dominic watched this movie for the first time this afternoon. So oh. <laughs> we're in a, we're, it's a great perspective to be in that you know this is his first time viewing as you know a 32 year old man um <laughs> to me growing up with the movie and you being in the movie so i mean dom how did you find little giants on your first time viewing like were you aware of it when you were a kid and it's just one that passed you by or how did that all go unfortunately this is one that has, has passed me by um considering you know the actors that are in it and the type of film that it is because exactly like you said it's it follows the same sort of path as the Mighty Ducks and uh, and other sort of sporting films like that, where you have kind of like a ragtag bunch of kids that are put together to make a team, and it's that true underdog story. And this is the type of film that I love. Uh, so getting to watch it today was was great. Having heard kind of your views on it, and then also having the chance to talk to Marcus today as well is also great because it's like someone's perspective who was in it and um someone who's worked with the actors that were in it and the the director and stuff like that so it's it's, yeah this is great for me (laughs) well marcus if we could just talk a little bit about you if we may so i did some research into you today of course and found out that you were you are uh, the winner of a copper wing award for best ensemble for self-medicated in 2005 that's awesome. Mm-hmm. An award winner on our podcast. That's amazing. Self-Medicated was a pretty interesting movie. Um, it uh, it focused around this kid named uh, Andrew, who was is like a juvenile delinquent in uh, Las Vegas. And it, it's based, it's a true story. Well, sorry, not a true story. It's, a, it's based on the writer's actual life. So obviously little things here and there are, are different. Um, but... Uh, yeah, he, um, juvenile delinquent, him and his friends would like do drugs and drive down the Vegas strip and shoot people with paintballs, you know, and people who don't suspect it think they're just getting shot. Um, and, uh, basically his mom is kind of not in a great place either. She's, a, you know, a, uh, prescription drug abuser and, uh, she sends him off to this, uh, like, uh, delinquent camp in uh, I think it was Utah but it's um it's kind of like these people do want to help kids but they you know these are either the worst of the worst or the parents just don't care you know it's one of those it's one of those two it's like parents just don't care to parent uh, and they don't know what to do and so they send them to this camp and where they I, I don't say they're, they're not torturing kids but it is you know extreme discipline where it's like you have to write essays or you have to stand for hours on end. You can't lean, you can't sit or else we restart the clock. 
And if it gets worse from there, like the kid doesn't shape up from there, they ship him off to Samoa, where Samoa has no particular as you know as far as the when the show when the, the story was written has no particular um uh child abuse laws and so where they will you know beat you to get you shipped you know in, into shape and then send you back home but no one comes back better after that um and so i i was playing another uh kid at the the center that he was sent to in utah and um you know the main guy uh he uh wants to get everyone to escape and so you know we all go on the run until we're kind of one by one captured and sent back but yeah it was a it was definitely a, a script where you read and you're like this is <laughs> this is this is dark and this is heavy and uh, i like it <laughs> nice yeah heavy subject matter well, yeah. you have a super uh, impressive acting resume of a lot of things that I and I'm sure Dom uh, are fans of. And you've been consistently working from all the way from 1991 to, to now um, with things like, if I may, appearances in ER, in Jingle All The Way. That must have yeah. been awesome. <laughs> did, yeah. did you get to meet Arnie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that one, uh, so I got that part. Um, the Little Giants has an uncredited director. Um, Dwayne Dunham is is the director, and Dwayne is great. You know, he uh, I worked with him again later after uh, Little Giants too. Um, and uh, but there's uncredited director Brian Levant, and he did um, I think the Flintstones movie, and um, Little Giants was starting to fall behind. And uh, Dwayne, before this movie, he was an editor. I think he did it. Uh, he did some of this. He was like assistant editor and editor on a few of the Star Wars movies. I have I have some of that in my trivia. Yeah. yeah and so um, he went off. They, they had him start on editing the movie and they Brian brought in uh, Brian Levant to finish up the the, end, the big game at the end. Uh, and so uh, Jingle All the Way comes around. Brian Levant is the director of that. And I think they needed to add a scene um, in the toy store where he takes the um, the uh, uh, remote control car and trips uh, Sinbad, where Arnold Schwarzenegger trips Sinbad. And so Brian Levant just called my agent, and they, you know, it was just a straight offer. It was one day of work. And, uh, you know, I, I just got offered the part to, you know, come pretend to drive a remote controlled car next to Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> what, what a great day. Yeah, <laughs> that was a pretty good day. Um, and although it was like, it was in Los Angeles and I think it was like 80 something degrees and everyone's in winter gear. Yeah. For the Christmas <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. But no, he was a great guy. You know, he, uh, he was, we're in the toy store and he's smoking a big cigar and then, you know, uh, no one's going to stop Arnold Schwarzenegger from smoking a cigar in the 90s, <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, you know, he just he would give a big hello, and then we get back to work. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, they, they continue. You were in another childhood favorite of mine, Boy Meets World. And oh, yeah. it has you down here as Einstein Kid, which I'm hoping means you're in that episode where they sort of go on the on a TV game show. Yep. And Corey's show, yeah. and Corey's wearing like the brain hat. Is that the episode? Yeah, that's it. He um, uh, so I'll, I'll, there's it has me as Einstein kid, but actually I was on Boy Meets World twice. Um, I like to think that it was the same character both times because <laughs> uh, you know I think once I'm supposed to be like a sixth grader or something, and they they uh, send us off. You know, the Corey and the, the group they trick us into going to this place, and then when we come back. Um, you know, we're like, that wasn't who you said it was. And then we all go to drink our milk and they've poked holes in the milk and we get milk all over. I think I remember that, that scene as well. I think it was the one where, um, Sean's dad is the, becomes the janitor. He gets a job as the janitor. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and then later, you know, a few years later, yeah, they're doing the game show and I'm one of the smart kids at the, at the other school, um, and 
yeah, I mean, it was just like, uh, I'd like to think that they bullied me so much and I left the school and I made something of my life. <laughs> yeah, you turned that whole milk situation around. You plugged those yeah. holes with knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> well, it continues even further. Um, so one of my wife's favorite sort of childhood uh, TV shows was Hey Arnold. And you were oh. various voices on Hey Arnold. Yeah. So I... Uh, I the, it, the I was in the pilot episode or you know the, the one of the first episodes that aired and um yeah I was cast with you know the they cast all the kids you know they they got all actual kids to do the show um you know cuz sometimes in animation when they want um you know children they get adults to kind of do a, a kid's voice well for this one they wanted actual kids and so Craig Bartlett the creator of Hey Arnold you know, cast a whole bunch of people. Um, I think quite a few of them are still working as myself. You know, I um, uh, I think who he plays, is it Stinky? There's this one, uh, Adam Wiley. We've, you know, we've known each other our, our whole lives acting and we still run into each other here and there. Um, but yeah, he he's still, he's still working. Um, I think the girl who was Helga is still working. And um, so he, he cast us all and uh, Nickelodeon had built an animation building in, in Burbank in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, I think it had just opened up. And so we get in, it's this super new building. They have, you know, it's brightly colored uh, orange and has the Nickelodeon, you know, uh, branding all over it. And uh, so we're in there recording and they recorded everybody together. Because that's another thing. Sometimes they just record people individually. You know, it, depending on the on the show, they they just record one person. You know, in the booth by themselves. Just here, say your lines. Give us three, give us three readings in that line. Okay, we'll move on. But uh, hey, Arnold, they got all the kids in a big semicircle. Put us all on mics. You know, scripts in front of us, and we just go. Um, you know, scene by scene, do it in the order that it was that the episode is and it was a uh, it was pretty I didn't realize till later how like unique that was at the time that's super awesome and again what a great experience and to not only be like an on-screen actor but to also do voice acting and have that in your repertoire to pull from is awesome another one I have noted here is you did some of the a voice on the Little Mermaid 2 <laughs> that there's a couple of funny stories with that one. Um, the it's mostly due uh, with life. Um, yeah, so Little Mermaid two. It's um, it was just I'm like a mer boy. I'm like I got one line in there. I'm just the main character comes down to the like Atlantis or I forgot where they live. Um, and I'm just one of the I'm like a teen boy that welcomes the girl. So cut two years later, um, I'm dating my wife, and. Uh, we're talking about Disney movies and stuff. And uh, um, we were like, we were getting on the, the Disney direct to, you know, direct to video sequels, you know, like uh, like Return of Jafar or like Jungle Book 2. <laughs> and um, she was like, oh yeah, I never let my kids watch that. Or like The Little Mermaid 2, Return to Sea. And I was like, <laughs> and I just started cracking up. And she was, she, just, she was like, what? And she, she was like, I'm not that funny. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, that movie, why would I let my... I was like, no, 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 are you serious about that specific movie? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, were you looking at my IMDb recently? And she was like, no. And I'm like, look it up. <laughs> and she sees it's right there. I was like, of all the movies for you to pick, you choose the one that I'm in. To... <laughs> <laughs> so, so many options that she could have gone with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope you've made her watch it many, many oh, well, times. Oh, we have. Yeah, we have. And it's, it's, uh, it's rough. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also uh, have credits in Eight Simple Rules, mm -hmm. Malcolm in the Middle, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, yeah, yeah. House, you did a voice on um, a Star Wars video game, and oh, yeah. many, many more. Like, Marcus, you're the man. I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, you know, it's um, you know, that in in the best way possible. That's what it is to just be a, a working actor. You know, like we, 
it's it's easy to see acting as like oh he, he there's tom cruise or you know um uh there's you know sir ian mckellen uh you know and and it's you know they they are great actors and have their great movies and uh whether or not they should be considered great actors or great movies. Yeah, um, that's more for Tom Cruise, not even McKellen. Um, but, uh, but the working actors are those, you know, those that that guy who gave, you know, um, the uh, Tom Cruise's coffee in the movie, or one of the cops in X Men that Ian McKellen's going to shoot with. The, you know, it's it. Those are the guys. Who it's like, yeah, they they work. You know, they do a couple jobs a year. You know, and and there's a. Uh, and you just it's your a it's your day job in the best way when when you can work as much as uh as much as they do as much as i hopefully can continue to keep working um because it's it's not the glamorous part i mean when um when you know if you have a job that is not in the entertainment industry uh and uh you get out of you get out of college and you go for your first job interview. Um, you know, there's there's nerves. You know, you need to know what you're gonna talk about. What have you done your research on the company you're interviewing with? Well, and all, you know, acting as a as a life is is always doing that. You know, because you get you're you're getting a job um, per audition for the most part. So I go out on a commercial for Taco Bell. And then I get the part, and then in a couple of weeks I have to go on another audition for something else. And you, it's that's that's the life. It's the it's the grind of preparing, getting ready, trusting your instincts on how to you know do certain things, and then hopefully it all works out. And and that's uh, um, for people who are afraid of interviewing or have a hard time interviewing for work. Acting's not the way to go because that's that's all that's ninety nine percent of the job. Well, I mean, can I ask how you got started into acting? So you got started at a very young age. Was it something you were always into? Were you, you know, is it from being in school plays and, and things or being scouted or how did how did it begin for you? Um, I think, okay, so the story's a little blur. I started when I was three. Wow. Um, yeah. So, and then, you know, there's, there's a ton of stuff in there that isn't on IMDb because, you know, I do a lot of commercials too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they don't list all the commercials on, on IMDb, but, um, I believe it started, I, I have two older brothers. Um, I think my mom was with us somewhere and they, there was some person like at a mall saying that my, you know, my oldest brother, Oh, he should be in commercials. Um, or, you know, he should do acting. And, I think my mom actually looked into it and then uh, and into that for, for my oldest brother and my middle brother. Um, and before he even got started, my oldest brother didn't want to do it. So he, you know, he, he quit right off the bat. My, my middle brother, he, um, he kept going. So he, he was working. And so my mom would take him to um, auditions, but you know, me being so young, she had to bring me too. Uh, and uh, at some point, you know, they were like, Oh, you know, he's a, fun little guy uh, why don't you just bring him in you know to the audition too and we'll see you know when you're doing kid auditions it's usually pretty simple it'll be like uh pretend that you're um that you all want a snack that mom is bringing out and then you know you all jump around um and so that was how i got my start it was just i was a uh, tag along and um that eventually they were like well you know he's he got this part why don't we just make him an actor why don't we just sign him with the with the uh talent agency and um uh and that was how it started it's uh uh it just you know family started and then it became fun and you know it it remains fun and it remains a job i want to keep doing that's why i'm so i'm doing it this like 30 something years later <laughs> so i was gonna say when it when it came to little giants um were you um, was it your agency that then got you the audition or were you approached or yeah, so, uh, what happened there? Yeah. I, uh, so the way it usually works, um, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming this is how it usually works everywhere. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know what it's like in, in the UK. Cause you, I, I, you know, like, uh, you know, I've watched like Sherlock and some Downton Abbey. I'm like, okay, how'd that guy, 
how'd that guy who was just in this episode, how did he get that part? You know, what, what did he do? But um, out here, usually what it is, is um, for those, like, I think they call them like one to five it, it, out, out here, uh, uh, or sorry, under five. Uh, if you have like under five lines, it's, you know, they, they put out like a, a uh, not, I wouldn't call it, yeah, I guess it's a general notice. Um, and they have uh, like this um, website, or it used to be an actual like mailed out packet called Breakdown Services. And it's called, you know, that's the breakdowns. And they go to, they get sent out to agencies and managers. And the agent and the managers, they look through all these breakdowns, go, oh, my client, my client would be good for this one and this one and this one. And then they'll, they'll back then mail out headshots to the casting director. Um, uh, now they email it um, <laughs> yeah, or just click a link, you know? Uh, and so, um, and then what happens is the casting, it gets back to the casting director, the casting director looks through all the pictures for a certain part and the people they want to see, they tell the agency and then we go in, you know, the, the agency tells the actor to go. Uh, so for Little Giants, it was part that, um, but also because there were so many kid parts, they did like a nationwide uh, casting. Um, so they went from like city to city. Um, uh, I don't know how they chose what cities. <laughs> And they, you know, they they saw kids in different cities uh, who had acting experience, who did not have acting acting experience. Um, and uh, so I was, you know, since I was in L.A. and an actor, you know, I, it was just a traditional uh, audition. Um, but uh, um, uh, Todd Bosley, I think he was he was he's from Kansas City um, and he was doing acting out there and um I think they had an audition somewhere nearby, not just Kansas City. And he, since he had done commercials and stuff out there, he he went to that one. Um, and then basically they whittled it down. It's it's like American Idol or or um, uh, I'm trying to don't is is there a similar thing in the UK? We where, have X Factor. X Factor, and they go yeah. city to city. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so thing. yeah, so it's like it's like that, just not televised. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and uh, and eventually they bring them all to Los Angeles. Um, and, uh, you know, but at, even at that point, you're looking at like, uh, for like 10 parts, you're looking at, you know, a hundred something kids. Um, and so, uh, when it came down to it, I think we, we had a callback and then, uh, finally we went to Amblin, which was Steven Spielberg's production company. We went to his offices at, uh, Universal Studios. Um, and, uh which was just kind of amazing because I mean, come on, it's even now he's Spielberg, but in the nineties Spielberg was like the king of the world when it comes to <laughs> movies. Yeah. And um, so we went into his, uh, his offices, all the kids, and uh, he had just won like eight Oscars or something for Schindler's list. Uh, Cause they had like, you know, billboards and stuff up all around. And then um, they put us in there, you know, to hang out. They put us in the screening room where he just has Hook on. Uh, so all the kids were watching Hook. And then they bring us out in groups and we like stand in the line and Spielberg. I think it was just Spielberg, but I think there was one other person like, I, you know, who, who, who else do you remember when he's sitting next to Spielberg? You know, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, they, they asked the kids, you know, he just wants to meet them. He, I, I think they wanted kids who could be kids but who could also do the acting part, who could say the lines when they're supposed to, you know, and that's a, that's a fine line. Um, Cause you know, certain kid actors are very rehearsed. The way they are is very like professional and, and that comes across on screen, especially when you're a kid. But then if you're just a random kid, you can't do the, the acting part. You don't, you're like, why are we still here? You know, you'll be complaining and stuff. So they need, it, they need to find the best of both worlds. They had already done the acting stuff before that, so he just wanted to meet the kids to see what they were like. And me and uh, the kid who played uh, Zoltek, Michael Zweiner, the um, in while we were waiting in line, I don't know what we were talking about. We started getting on the Karate Kid, and and we were doing the the crane kick and something, just just screwing around while we're waiting in line. And Spielberg can see us, and so we we get up to him, and he's like, "So what were you guys doing over there?" And, 
you know, it's like, are we in trouble? We were just waiting in line. <laughs> we weren't being bad. We didn't break anything. And so we were talking, oh, we were doing the crane kick from from uh, Karate Kid. And he's like, oh, okay. And, you know, just seeing, yeah, I think he just saw kids playing. And, and that's what it needed to be. And so, you know, guaranteed both of us got the part, you know, that we were we were going out for. Although I actually, I, my all my auditions were for uh, Zoltec, for the center, the, the farting kid. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a uh, that's awesome. And to just you know to have met Steven Spielberg and then to you know be selected by him, um, mm-hmm. that's the heights of the that's as high as you can go right there. That's uh, yeah. that's in, that's incredible. And the Karate Kid, an amazing movie. I actually haven't yeah. seen the Karate Kid, the nineteen eighty four version, of course, until this COVID nineteen lockdown. And oh I yeah. Subse- I subsequently went on a run of watching it twice watching the whole trilogy and then binging both seasons of cobra kai oh yeah i i've wanted to watch that um yeah that's one of those other things i gotta watch but you know karate kid i my my brothers were were into it i was not so much into it although uh, the funny thing my brothers uh, is karate kid 2 the one where they go to japan yeah the second one yeah 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 my my brothers are technically in that (laughs) <laughs> no way well i was gonna ask is your you said that your brother was acting for a while did he continue with it um in high school so when he was about 15 or so he he just quit you know he it wasn't it wasn't fun for him and he he found other interests he was really into architecture um and so and they had a great architecture program at our at the high school he went to and so he just focused on that so you know he's he has no regrets about you know, leaving the industry. Um, but yeah, in in Karate Kid 2, they they get to the they get to the airport, and there's a bunch of the bunch of these school children that are running by, and the tops of their heads are are in it. Um, as my mom can, as a mother can know what the tops of her child's head looks like. So. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. I love that. Let's dive into some of the facts. So. The Little Giants was released on the 14th of October 1994. Uh, as you mentioned, it was directed by Dwayne Dunham, who also directed some episodes of Twin Peaks and then did some sort of Disney Channel original movies like Halloween Town, The 13th Year, Double Teamed, Tiger Cruise. And he also, as you said, he edited Return of the Jedi, which is an amazing credit to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Dwayne. So we one of the movies you didn't name uh, uh, with the uh, Disney Channel movies that he did was um, uh, Right on Track, which was a movie I was in with Dwayne, or you know that Dwayne directed. Um, and it was about like a true story about the well, as far as a true story can be with Disney Channel, um, <laughs> these uh, these two uh, girl uh, drag racers, um, and uh, do you know what drag race is? Uh, you know, it's not it's like, you know, you've seen NASCAR or stock car racing. Drag racing is a straight line. Um, you know, who can do it the fastest? Yeah. Um, and uh, so they um, uh, it's about two girls so, uh, who are drag racing. So the first daughter was um, Beverly Mitchell, who was on a show called Seventh Heaven. Um, and then uh, the second girl, the second daughter was Brie Larson. Who oh, was wow. Captain Marvel. oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so you know we we were working together. Uh, I think she was twelve, and I was like sixteen or seventeen or something. <laughs> so long time ago. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't name that one as I I hadn't seen that one. I've mm-hmm. seen quite a few of these Disney Channel original movies because these sort of came out at the, in that when oh, I was yeah. at that sort of right age. But so interesting. I will <laughs> I will I'll dig that one out of the archives and I will go to <laughs> see. I, I think it's on is. Disney Plus. Um, I was I was literally just going to say, are these now available on Disney Plus? That yeah, really yeah, cool? no, that that one is. My wife watched it, and it was just like, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go watch the dishes. Why don't you sit here and you can watch this movie? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so the story for the Little Giants was by James Ferguson and Robert Shawcross, and the story is based upon a TV commercial. Well, that's where the original premise came from that Spielberg saw and then wanted to turn into a movie. Uh, is that something... Well, like, have you seen the original 
commercial? Or um, were you aware of you that? Know, I think I I saw it a little while ago. I don't remember it particularly well. Um, I feel like it looks very much like the beginning of Little Giants, uh, with that takes place in like the '60s. Um, it doesn't look so much like the the you know the '90s uh, side of things because I think it wanted that like nostalgia of, of uh, playing you know it, just just being kids playing uh, a sport. Um, but uh, yeah, you know it's like uh, being a kid doing that. It was like a lot of that stuff kind of went over my head, you know, as far as the like the uh, how the show uh, what was the uh, the inception of the uh, of the movie and who was involved and stuff. Except for except for Spielberg and um, I think the cinematographer who was Janusz Kaminski, which is crazy to think that this silly kids movie is being, the cinematographer is like, I don't know how many Academy Awards the guys won, but you know, he did Schindler's List and he did um, uh, uh, War of the Worlds. And I think he did the last uh, Indiana Jones movie, you know, just the amount of high quality cinematography that this guy has done. And he's doing this kids movie. (laughs) Maybe Spielberg wanted to give him a little breather after doing Schindler's List. Maybe yeah. he needed like a little bit of happiness in his life for a little yeah. while. Yeah, just yeah, just how about this? You can work and then you can go home to see your family. You're not here, you know, fourteen <laughs> hours a day. Um, I, I genuinely, I genuinely think um, Little Giants was one step away from having John Williams do the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although we got John Debney and he did uh, Passion of the Christ, so you know that's not too bad either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah true <laughs> um but you know uh uh yeah john Kaminsky, he was um he was very friendly he he loved uh messing with the michael Zawiner. like he liked just you know they had a they had a a, a loving antagonistic relationship as far as i can remember you know <laughs> just like they would just give each other crap all day long um but uh oh, what was that thing um but you know, you still look at it because I, I look at it versus like other kids' movies at the time, um, and it's a it's a great looking movie. Like it's it's obviously you know has a good cinematographer behind it. Like you can see it, um, and you compare. You know, I, I start comparing it. You know, this is, happens later as an adult. Where I was like, that's a good looking movie, and you know, you compare it to um, like Kicking and Screaming, the the Will Ferrell. Uh, soccer movie and you're like that's not as good looking you know and i think the only one that i feel like has the same kind of like eye for cinematography was the sandlot and that had come out before um but that's a that's a a beautiful movie um in it's like nostalgia uh for like the the 50s and 60s that's a great movie as well i actually yeah. only saw the sandlot for the first time about a year ago um and that's one that I just kind of had missed for some reason, um, but I still really enjoyed it watching it um, as an adult. But um, yeah, you're right. It's um, it's a well shot film, and this one, yeah, it's very crisp, very well shot. It's very nice and light in terms of the you know the scenery and everything. And yeah, yeah. So we play a couple games on here. So I'll go over to Dom first because you you might know this, Marcus. But Dom, mm-hmm. can you guess what the budget was for Little Giants? Okay, so this is where we get a bit technical. So I have to consider <laughs> I have to consider the year. So ninety four, so early nineties. I'm thinking about the actors that are in it. So we've got uh, Rick Moranis in it. Uh, is it Ed O'Neill's in it? Uh, plus all the kids. Plus um, Harry Shearer's in it as well, which I wasn't expecting. Oh, yeah. I was not expecting Harry Shearer to suddenly appear. Uh, I thought he'd crack out a few more voices, but didn't. <laughs> and then obviously John Madden and all the, the four NFL uh, stars that <laughs> get off a coach. So um, I'm going to go for a ballpark figure of $20 million. Ooh. Uh, did, and do, do you know, Marcus, or do you want to... I'm, guess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something like I don't know, like sixty, something outrageous at that time for a kids movie. Well, I'll have you know, Dominic was right, twenty oh, million. No, oh, I'm never right. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. I, because I, all I remember was, um, we had this one guy, 
he was the PR guy uh, for the movie. And, you know, he was talking with everybody about things that are going to happen and, you know, for the movie. But the movie kept going over um, uh, uh, over schedule. Um, oh. And I'm guessing over budget because of that. And so he actually left to go work on, um, uh, I think, Batman Forever. You know, like he his they paid him for a certain amount of time and he had to leave. So, you know, he was it was kind of like, oh, OK, I guess the movies is it. The movie did not do well when it came out. We that we do know. Um, it just uh, like in theaters, you know, not a lot of people went to go see it. it. It did well when it went on home video. Well, this is my so my next uh, part of this is to guess what it grossed. So oh. you've kind you've kind of given a little bit of spoilers there, Marcus. But we'll forgive you. We'll oh, forgive sorry. you. You were in Boy Meets World. You were my hero forever. <laughs> <laughs> Don, what do you think? What do you think uh, Little Giants grossed, like, I, in total? So, so you said there's some spoilers in there and some issues with budget. So um, I don't want to be disrespectful and say it made a loss. So I'm going to say $30 million. Okay. And Marcus, do you want to have a um, guess? I'll say I'll, oh, I'll, I'll say 25 <laughs> Oof. Oh. I'm I'm sorry to say, and oh. may, maybe we could fundraise to make the difference. Like, get go. Once once COVID is out of the way, you know, because that's probably a bigger problem right now. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can fundraise later down the line to fix this. But it actually did make a slight loss. It grossed nineteen million three hundred and six thousand dollars. Oh, yikes! But. But it does have a cult following. And like you said, Marcus, I think when it came to home video and it sort of found another audience and I'm sure it still does well on sort of streaming platforms or wherever it is. Dom, you must have put a, a couple a couple pound in there today on a rental on Amazon Prime yeah. or something. <laughs> well, I've, I've just put £3.49 into it. So that's what, let's say that's $3 worth. <laughs> So hey, I'll, we need... I'll probably see 10 cents of that. So thank you. Well, no problem. <laughs> all we need to do is get <laughs> our following and the following of this film. Because from what I've seen on uh, websites and things like that, as I was looking into the film, you know, before we decided to do the podcast, is that there is a massive following to this film. And obviously Simon's been in touch with a lot of these people as well. And um, I reckon we could we could raise $700,000 <laughs> to pay off... <laughs> To, to pay be, off the outstanding debt. Send that over to Warner Brothers and they'll be like, thank you? What is this yeah. for? <laughs> they say it's to right or wrong, Warner Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's in, uh, an interesting point you raise. And obviously, um, don't go into any specifics or anything. But we actually had, we did an episode last night of the podcast. It's actually going to come out as the episode after this podcast, which was Cool Runnings. And we did it with Raul D. Lewis, who plays Junior Bevel in Cool Runnings. Oh, uh-huh. you're, you're a fan of Cool Runnings? Oh, yeah. Cool Runnings. Cool was it, Runnings. Uh, <laughs> uh, I forgot the chant they say when it's like, feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. <laughs> Get on up. It's Bob's that time. Yeah, yeah. You can get that. <laughs> we, uh, we actually recorded for four hours last night with Raul. It just kept going. We we won't do we we won't do that with you unless you want to. We can break it. We can go for five. But <laughs> yeah. I, suddenly I, the dishes I, I are, hope I have enough interesting up. stories. There'll just be random thoughts for the next uh uh four and a half hours, I think. <laughs> yes. You have more than enough, I'm sure. Dom actually uh brought it up yesterday and Raul was talking about it, about how he still every now and again we'll get a check for residuals from Cool Runnings oh, yeah. and actually as it's continued and like Cool Runnings like the Little Giants it continues to have a market so is that something every now and again you'll get a little check in the mail and you'll get you know a few hundred dollars or this that and the other that will yeah. still be from the Little Giants oh yeah no, I mean we may not be a I, no uh wait when you said a few I was like maybe I got like a 150 um about maybe like six months ago todd and i were talking about it um uh so todd bosley who is jake berman uh you know i've known him since he lives in la now i still talk to him he was my best man at my wedding wow Um, that's awesome yeah and uh he 
uh, yeah, we were talking about it that, yeah, we got some, we were like both surprised by this check that we got for Little Giants because it was like, what? why so much money? And and I think what's happening now, because we're, I think you're seeing, we're seeing more residuals from Little Giants uh, specifically because of what you guys are doing. You know, it's, it's, it's come back around where the people who were kids when the movie came out, who had the, the VHS tape of, you know, little giants are like, oh, I wonder if that's available. Or they see that it's available and they're like, hey, I'm gonna watch that. And uh, and they can. Um, uh, and so I think that's what's, what's happening. So yeah, Cool Runnings. Yeah, definitely. I, now that makes me want to watch it. Uh-huh. Um, Wait, li- listen to our four hour podcast first. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it's, it also will come back around in, you know, touch wood that, you know, at some point, we have children, etc. Like I will not allow them to to watch modern day Disney. They will only be allowed to watch Cool Runnings, Little <laughs> Giants. You know, not in like some sort of like you know abusive way that I I would decide what they watch. But you know, it's a way to sort of relive your your own childhood vicariously through you know. That's the only reason to have kids, really, right? To watch Little Giants again. Yeah, yeah, and and well, and Star Wars, uh, the original. <laughs> Little Giants was filmed in California, not in Ohio. But, nope. Um, all, all California. It has a running time of one hundred and seven minutes, which is actually, um, you know, a bit a bit longer than a you know traditional Disney movie in the early nineties. So usually, like, be bang mm. on the ninety minute mark. But yeah, the pacing yeah. of the movies fast like it doesn't feel like you know a, a, not that that's long anyway by today's standards but it goes very quickly when watching it mm-hmm. so the cast we've sort of touched on already rick moranis which i mean what what a legend rick moranis is from little shop of horrors honey i shrunk the kids oh yeah you know the flintstones uh and you know just his whole career and this was actually one of his last sort of uh, screen performances, I guess, before he sort of semi-retired or sort of retired from public life. Yeah. So yeah, with with that, um, you know, uh, you know, we learned this later, so it kind of changes our whole perspective. You know, Todd and I have talked about this; it changes your whole perspective on the the filming. We didn't see him a lot. Um, you know, he was our coach, and you know, like he was supposed to be our like our our guy, and so we didn't. We, we didn't really see him a lot on set. Uh, Shauna did because a lot of her scenes are one on one with her, with, with him. Um, uh, we hung out more with the, you know, the, 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 the adults in the movie. It was, uh, we saw Ed O'Neill more and we saw, um, and, and uh, Rick Moranis is stand in. <laughs> so, like, in, there's certain scenes where if he's just in the background cheering on the kids, it's not Rick Moranis, it's his stand in. Oh, wow. Um, who, looked crazily like him it was it was kind of amazing um and so but then we learn you know later um is that i think it was maybe just a few years prior to little giants he his wife passed away Mm. and so like i said it was one of little giants was one of his last movies before his like semi-retirement and uh i was watching a thing recently because they were talking to him and they said it, he was saying that yeah he kind of well he didn't like retire officially in any way it was just he wanted to raise his kids that's it you know they didn't have their mother anymore so he was like i guess he had enough money to not be you know working and he wanted to raise his kids so you know how can you that it all makes way more sense now you know that we didn't you know he didn't want to hang out with us and he didn't want to see us. It was because he had a he was dealing with stuff and wanted to see his own family. You know, I can't uh, you can't blame him for that. Yeah, of course. And that's so, you know, honorable to. And oh, yeah. you have to respect that, like you said, because, he, yeah, he chose his family over his what I'm sure was, you know, could have been or was a very lucrative and successful you know, career and uh, yeah, like hats off to him. I mean, I read uh, somewhere recently that I think he is um, going to start to sort of come back. I guess now that his kids are adults and yeah. grown, and that I think he might be making an appearance in like an upcoming Ghostbusters movie or, or something like that. Um, yeah, hopefully. Which would be awesome to see him back because I think he. So we were talking a lot about John Candy uh, last night because obviously we're talking about Cool Runnings yeah. and. 
like John Candy, rest in peace to John Candy, of course, uh, oh. Rick, Rick Moranis the, the, and him, they're both like just such lovable people. Like you love them on screen and you know that and hope that they're like that off screen and from, you know, everyone's account anyway, that is what they're like. So um, yeah, that would be amazing to sort of see him come back because we could all use a little bit more Rick Moranis in our lives, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you know, we were what uh, when... This Christmas, I, lo- I watched Home Alone. Um, again, you know, for uh, and John Candy's in that. You know, he's helping uh, the mom get back to the the house to see Kevin, and it's like he was so good in that. And I, I heard like so much of his dialogue wasn't uh, scripted, mm-hmm. and you know, this whole thing about like a kid getting they accidentally locked him in the in the uh, in the funeral home in the basement with the bodies. And, um, you know, it's like, well, is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. I mean, he's, he's not talking, but he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's brilliant. John Candy, so, so good. So good. So we also have Ed O'Neill in, in the movie. Oh, oh, oh I, I was, uh, you interviewed Ed. I was like, oh. Oh, <laughs> no, no, not yet. Maybe one day. <laughs> we'll... Yeah. <laughs> uh, who famously was in Married with Children, is in, mm-hmm. you know, Modern Family, he's done voice work in Finding Dory, Wreck-It Ralph. Well, finally, um, to me anyway, I was too young, really, for Married with Children when that was sort of big. So oh, Ed yeah. O'Neill, to me, is Kevin O'Shea from The Little Giants. Like, that's what I know him as. Where I know probably mm-hmm. in America, that's he's probably known, you know, mostly for Married with Children, I would assume. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's a. Uh, I think it's generational, you know. So like, yeah, I know him as as Al Bundy, but like you said, it's that was not a show that. I mean, you know, it's. I don't know. I wouldn't know if it was tame by today's standards, but it, uh, you know, it was definitely like pushing the the envelope back then. And so I'm sure there's a bunch of people who weren't allowed to watch it. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I think it's it's probably like certain people know him as Al Bundy, and certain people know him as. Uh, uh, Jay Pritchard, you know, in uh, in uh, Modern Family, um, but uh, yeah, he he'll always be Kevin O'Shea to me. Yeah, <laughs> me too. And he he's brilliant in this movie. I think he gives oh, yeah. a great performance. He yeah, like from the you know chewing the gum and all of his mannerisms, it's perfect. So I mean, you said you obviously spent a bit of time with him off screen like was was he really cool to work with I mean what was he yeah. like on set it's you know it it's uh one of those things like the guy it's you kind of forget this even as you're an actor the guy's an actor so he was not Al Bundy off camera <laughs> you know he was not like you know yelling and doing crazy facial expressions or things like that he was just a normal person so like that took a second to get used to that he wasn't like running around like a crazy man um but you know he was you know he's a normal guy and and would talk to the kids and um you know he would just he didn't need to like he didn't need to talk to us but he he would like he would sit with us you know (laughs) just you know the kids would be chatting and stuff and he would be there um uh but uh i mean yeah he was he was so good in that and i think it's also a test it's a testament to him and to the the writing because he it easily could have been where he was the bad guy. Mm. That's you know how it wouldn't have been hard. No one would have questioned it. He could have been the bad guy of the movie. But the scene that always sticks out is the scene where Icebox is in the diner talking with him, and yeah, he's tr- yes, he's trying to convince her to not play. You know, he's saying you know, does Junior want you know a teammate or do you think he wants you know a cheerleader? Uh, and you're like, dude, why? You know, he's 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 the bad guy right now. He's trying to convince her to to quit, you know. But then, you know, she says, "You think I'm pretty?" And he goes, "No, I think you're beautiful." And it's like he didn't have to do that. You know, the writer didn't have to do that. Yeah. He, you know, like they could have just left it where he just tries to convince her to quit, and that's the end. You know, and he's the he's the bad guy. But he honestly, it is it is not. He's giving the advice that he thinks is right, whether or not he is. But he also doesn't. Like, he's not a jerk to his niece. No, he has a lot of redeeming qualities and redeeming moments. Yeah. Like, he doesn't want Spike to cheat later in the in the end yeah. game and moments exactly. like that. That he 
he is a person. He is a 3D character rather than being like like you said, just let's just make him the antagonist and he can, you know, make everybody hate him. You actually <laughs> to quote him, you can see it his way sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, we also have Shauna Waldron as Becky Icebox, which potentially could be one of the the most iconic female or just in general sport characters in a movie ever, dare I say. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, there's there's no doubt about it. I'm uh you know, I, I feel like if the movie had done better, you know, if more people had seen it, you probably would see more, you know, uh, girls wanting to play football than, than there already are or feeling that it was OK to play football. You know, because uh, what was I? I was watching something yesterday. Oh, I was watching a thing on on uh, this. It was a YouTube video of this like Archer talking about, you know, archery in movies and kind of critiquing them. And he said that, you know, there was more girls taking up archery because of Hunger Games mm. than, you know, than ever before, you know, and it, and it's just like she that was the um, the impact that Hunger Games had on on that world. And it's like, I think you could have had the same thing. You know, where would, you know, American football be now, um, you know, had more girls seen Little Giants? I mean, she is the main character, usually the the girl on the team is kind of uh a side character look at you know mighty uh mighty ducks isn't there there's a girl on the team but she's not the main character right that's that's exactly right and as i was actually about to bring up the mighty ducks because we did uh, a mighty ducks episode like this with matt doherty who played averman uh in the mighty ducks oh, uh-huh. and he was saying about how those movies transformed the the, the sport of hockey in terms of there was a lot of outreach, like kids were playing on rollerblades in, in the street. I mean, Dom and uh-huh. I were actually saying that we were trying to play hockey in our back garden here on grass, like, because we were so influenced by the movie. Um, so I think you're completely right that if Little Giants had potentially just had a little bit more success, I mean, obviously it was successful, but, you know, if it had mm. sort of pushed the, the boundaries or the limits with the box office a little bit more, then I think you're completely right that, yeah, it could have had a, an even greater impact on more female athletes wanting to get involved in American football. And she's a great role model, with you know, as a character in the film. And in some ways, she's, you know, more prolific than um, other sort of fictional sports characters in movies because... She kind of stands out, like you said, as sort of the main character or in the Mighty Ducks. I guess you could say that Charlie's the main character or whatever, but yeah. it's kind of, you know, the whole kids. We're in the Little Giants. It's like that as well. But it's very much like Icebox is sort of the centerpiece, so to speak. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's um, it's awesome. And she does a great, uh, gives a great performance in it as well. Um, was was she sort of tomboyish at all in real life? Or was that oh, yeah. just... Yeah. Yeah. She, I mean, she, she's, she's a tomboy in, in real life. Uh, um, yeah, I saw her a few years ago. Yeah. Like uh, Todd, I think still talks to her. We were hanging out, but <laughs> one thing about Shauna and it, it was like a pet peeve of mine is that she was just always late <laughs> and, and I it just drove me crazy. And I was like, you know what, if she's going to show up, she'll show up, but I, I'm, I'm not going to, I can't, I'm not going to hang around. <laughs> To like say hello i'm like it's i'm it's late i'm gonna go home i'm tired <laughs> um but uh yeah no and she's she's still tomboyish um but yeah i mean i, I don't really notice that. i mean you know she's uh she's very uh becky was very much like her you know in i would say every almost every way um and i was trying to think did she Oh yeah, her and in during the filming of the movie, her and, and her and uh, Sam Horgan, who played Spike, had a a uh, a thirteen year old romance. No yeah. way! That's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. breaking news uh, right there. Yeah, With the enemy. As, as far as thirteen uh, year old romances go, um, you know. <laughs> no way! What, what what would Junior Floyd have to say about that? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, I remember you know I was me and. Uh, Oh, and you know, uh, J.P. Stoyer, uh, who was uh, R- Ricky, 
Um, um, he passed away. Uh, uh, jo- Johnny. Johnny, yeah, he passed away a year or so ago. Um, that seems we sad, yeah. were like annoying younger siblings to uh, to to Devin Sawa and um, uh, Joey Simran, who was uh, oh god, I can't remember. Sean that Murphy. Name. Yeah, Sean Murphy. Yeah, because um, they were the we were all put up in the same hotel in uh, San Luis Obispo where we filmed most of the Urbania stuff. And uh, they were like talking to some girls and me and JP were just like on the other side of a window that like the girls could see, but the guys couldn't, we're like making faces and being idiots. And it was, <laughs> it sounds, it sounds like good times. I mean, so of, of, it's that it did everybody, everybody got along. Obviously it wasn't like they tried to keep like the Cowboys players and the little no. giants sort of separate to create any sort of, you know, on screen tension or no, anything. No, you don't have to do that kind of stuff. You know, I think that's also why you need to make sure that the actors could act. You know, whereas if you just chose regular kids, they'd have, maybe they'd have a harder time. But now we all we all hung out together and uh, messed around and, you know, did stuff. They they also tried to arrange because it was over the summer. Um, but they also tried to arrange little like excursions for the for the kids and the parents on the weekends. Uh, so I think we went to like Hearst Castle uh, on one day. And then there was like a, a nearby like go-kart and um, arcade mini golf thing. And we'd go there pretty regularly. But yeah, so all the kids, they, they wanted all the kids to, you know, to have fun and to hang out with each other. No, th- this isn't, uh, you know, um, like a David Fincher-esque <laughs> or a super method actor-y you know, <laughs> performance. So they were like, no, we really want them to hate each other. <laughs> um, That's good. All right, and then as you were shooting over summer, did that mean that you didn't have to worry about, you know, schooling and things in between shooting scenes? Like you were allowed um, to just be off? Not for, uh, for, for most of it, we didn't have to worry about it. Uh, there was... Um, it it started filming at the end of one school year and it should have ended before the next school year, but it didn't. And so uh, we kind of, at the, the beginning of the shoot and the end of the shoot, we were doing, uh, you know, schooling, um, uh, you know, every, every day during the week. And, you know, all of us, they, they just show us in a office uh, conference room somewhere and we'd all be doing our homework. Cool. Nice. So you you mentioned uh, Devin Sauer. So he played Junior, and he was also uh, Stan in Eminem Stan video, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, Final Destination. He was Casper when Casper was, you know, oh, yeah. transformed to a you know a real a real life boy or whatever. I as a kid, I was like obsessed with his hair. Like I actually grew that haircut. <laughs> it was it was a good haircut. It was. <laughs> so uh you know if you ever if you ever speak to him again let him know that you know a kid from the uk grew his hair to be like that (laughs) (laughs) no i actually ran into devin earlier this year um i you know i haven't seen him in uh, 20 something years uh and i ran into him um at an uh, audition um so we uh before COVID 19 and all this i actually booked a pilot uh, a pilot show, a uh, TV series. And uh, at the callback, I saw him there. And, but you know, it's, it's tough because you're both, the stakes are so high at this point. You know, you're like, if I get this, it can be great. And so we did a quick chat and then we had to stop because it was like, you need to, you know, he was going in next. I didn't want to like mess up his preparation uh, you know, in his head, because you're kind of, you got to do the lines, you got to do it a certain way. And so we, we really didn't get to talk, but it was really good seeing him again. I haven't seen the, it's, it's like, uh, it's kind of awkward when you walk into a waiting room, you see someone you haven't seen in 25 years, and then you hug them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, um, so, yeah, no, I mean, it was, it was good seeing him and I, he's doing, he's doing great. I think uh, he had a rough couple of years that are, are, I think are pretty documented and, uh, but I think he's doing great now. You know, uh, he's he's got his family. He's had a couple of TV shows that went really well. 
and uh, yeah, I, I hope nothing but the the best for him. And I think he's I think he's there. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear. You know, he's he's doing well. You said you booked the pilot. Does that does that mean is potentially when this COVID stuff's over that that might go ahead again still um, or just on hold for now? I you know I I have no news. Um, it's basically. It, yeah, basically everything's on hold for the time being. You know, I don't think anything's been canceled outright. Um, because, it, you know, really a, a network wouldn't, if they didn't believe in a show to some extent, they probably just wouldn't do it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, um, uh, yeah, so it's uh, hopefully when this whole thing is over, we get to film it. Um, it's pretty interesting. It's a Western, which... I never thought I would get to be in a Western and not be, you know, a railroad worker, <laughs> you know, uh, playing a Chinese railroad worker. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, I get to, you know, I, I get to be a, uh, get to have a Southern accent. I get to um, drive a, a horse and carriage. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I hope it, we, we get to, to do it and I hope it gets picked up of obviously, but you know, just being able to film it would be um, just a, a fun experience in that they built, they already were like, I think they were almost done with the set and it was all an outdoor set, um, a Western town. Um, I was thinking they were just going to use the, like at the universal studios theme park, they have the old Western town that they built, you know, on the back lot. I was like, we're just going to use that. And I was like, no, we're going to, we're going to build something. And you're like, oh, okay. That's, that's awesome. Well, fingers crossed that, that, you know, goes into production and gets picked up, etc. when this is all over and, uh, mm -hmm. we'll definitely be supporting that. So, um, we also has, as, as you've mentioned, and now we know your best man at your wedding, which is awesome. Todd Bosley playing Jake, um, mm -hmm. who was also in a, a, a favorite of mine as a kid, Treehouse Hostage, which is great. Wow. Okay. Not many people know of Treehouse Hostage. That's a hidden uh, gem. No, oh, you, uh, when you get Todd on the show, you have to ask him all the questions. Todd, uh, I feel like he remembers almost everything. Like on, <laughs> he remembers almost everything about everything. Um, he's just not attentive. <laughs> so many times he'll catch Todd and be like, so Todd, what do you think? He'd be like, what? He'd be like, what? It's just you and me. How are you not paying attention? I tried to reach out to him a few times, uh, but I don't think he's been active on social media. Um, oh, no, no, no. He's uh, he's not a particularly... I don't think he understands certain things about technology, too. So it's like, like if he... If you're not, like... Because I think when you when you sent us... A, sent me a message, it was like, I had to, like, accept it. Or yeah, something. The, yeah. The step I had to go through. So I don't think he like I don't think he even sees that. He's just like, I don't know what has happening, you know. Yeah, I think it sort of comes up as sort of looking like it's sort of spam or something yeah. because it's not sort of like, you know, my name or whatever, because it says it's like the Mighty Nineties podcast or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, well it'd be I'll let him know. What, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because we'd love to speak to him. I mean, so Dom and I have you know, jobs and, and lives and, you know, wives and girlfriends and whatever. Like, as in, <laughs> as in, I have a wife, he has a girlfriend, not that we hey, both have multiple you have wives. both a wife and a girlfriend. <laughs> the UK is very different. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've seen The Tiger King on Netflix, but that's basically how we're living out here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh my God, that show is, um, it is insane. Um, <laughs> And you're like, that's, and you're like, I hope this isn't what, like if someone, like an alien came down and like, hey, you need to learn about America. <laughs> Watch Tiger King. <laughs> you know, <laughs> be like, here's a guy with a mullet and loads of tigers. <laughs> yeah. What baffles me, what baffles me the most about Tiger King and uh, is just the fact that he ran for like a presidential candidate. <laughs> that, oh yeah. Well, I, I remember... When they showed the clip of him on Colbert, or you know, when Colbert was talking, no, no, John Oliver was talking about it. I um, I was like, oh my god, I remember watching that episode of uh, uh, last week tonight when that happened. Holy crap, that guy is that guy. insane. It's a great story, and it's definitely helped uh, kill some time during uh, yeah, COVID nineteen. But um, but what so? 
basically like, what I was trying to say is so Dom and I have like you know regular jobs and regular lives etc and we're not with this podcast we're just we enjoy talking to each other about these movies um, and we usually just do it just us two and it's just like a hobby really but then as we well as we have this sort of extra time right now as everyone else does we just thought that it would be a, a great way to firstly be able to talk to people like yourself to enjoy you know, talking about these movies and get a greater insight. But we also feel like, well, the majority of, you know, actors and actresses, etc., probably are just at home right now. So if we're able to talk to people and then able to promote what other people have got going on as well, it's, uh, you know, just a win-win. So but I think sometimes when I'm like messaging people to ask them to come on, I'm not sure if they're thinking that we're, you know, trying to get something out of it or anything, where really we're just trying to get you know, just ask these questions about Devin Sauer's haircut and things like that, you know? <laughs> a lot of the time it's us wanting to talk to kind of childhood heroes, even though, um, it, you know, we're all pretty much the same age and uh, kids at the same time and stuff like that. Watching these films and Simon, especially like watching The Little Giants, you, you would have been a, a hero of his as as well as, you know, the, the guys in the Mighty Ducks and, and so on and mm. so forth that, that we love. So it's, it's a great opportunity for us because we're talking to people that we absolutely, you know, loved watching growing up. Exactly that. Yeah. So wait, so have you, you've seen Treehouse Hostage? Like you were saying oh, it like oh, yeah. as if like, is that one that he enjoyed being in? It wasn't like he hated it or anything, was it? Oh, no. No, no, he didn't hate that one. That was, I think that was, a, it was an interesting job but I, I think he i think he really did enjoy it that had jim varney in it right that's it yeah yeah he said um well I'll, I'll, he he did talk about it and i think we we watched it i forgot i forgot if it was on tv or we had to like rent it or something but um yeah no i do remember uh watching that um uh i mean i'll i'll let todd you know if you, I'll, I'll i'll tell todd to to, to get uh back with you uh, and I'm sure he has a lot more stories to tell about, you know, Treehouse Hostage. Awesome. Um, it, uh, all I know is that there was a treehouse and there was a hostage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he was also in uh, Jack with Robin Williams. Yep. Um, rest in peace, of course. Uh, and yeah. then recently he was in uh, on Nickelodeon show called Game Shakers, which has, I think it has Kel from Keegan and Kel is like a presenter on it, which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome because you know hashtag good burger. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Todd. Todd's got uh, he he he's got an interesting uh, career. I, it's I he he is an unforgettable guy. Like just the way he is, the way his I mean it, his voice strikes you first, uh, and then everything else about him hits you after. Um, so yeah, he gets he gets like some he gets some good work where they. You know, like the like game shakers. Like I think that was only supposed to be like one. As far as I know, it was only supposed to be like one or so episodes. And he was like, "It's a kids show." We were, we I think when he filmed that, we were we were in our thirties already. And you know, he was like, "I'm gonna be doing a kids show." Uh, and then they loved him, and then they put him in like three or four more episodes. You know, it's like, and you can't. Uh, as uh, as much as it's kind of like, well, it's, at least I got this one, and it's like, no, they want me to come back for more. It's like, great, you know. Well, he also he, he also had a long run on Scrubs as well. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's awesome, and that's something that's you know got a massive following to it as well. And I think, like you said, he well, like I've seen him in loads of things, like the OC, and I think he was in an episode of Boy Meets World, maybe as well. But it's like when you see his face, you're like, oh, that guy. Like, obviously, yeah. I know who he is because yeah. he's from the Little Giants. But I think like my wife, like, so my wife watched this movie with me this afternoon, the Little Giants, uh, to you know just brush up a little bit. And uh, and she was like, oh, that guy, like pointing to Todd, like, oh, I know him from, you know, loads of different things. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I think uh, you're very striking. Although, uh, Todd and I like to, uh, to have a uh, light competition. Uh, when he got scrubs, I was like, oh, that's interesting. You know, I was on House, um, the real doctor show. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally just going to say, oh, you both yeah. played 
uh, have... peewee American football players, and now you're you, you both play doctors and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> I was like, have fun with your little comedy doctor show. I'm gonna go solve problems. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, uh, did you did you get much screen time with Hugh Laurie in House? Um, I, I got a little know. bit. Um, I, I got a lot, a little bit. You know, he he stays. Uh, he doesn't stay in character between takes. Uh, he uh, he keeps his American accent between takes. Um, I think I was reading something that he says he does find it difficult. Uh, he does find the American accent somewhat difficult. So he does. Uh, he tries to keep it because uh, uh, if you don't keep doing it, it's easy to fall out of it. But it was, you know, we were there all day. We were working with him. I think there were like two or three scenes that day that we were in that he was in. And so you know, me and um, the other people that were in scene, we we said goodbye. You know, we wanted to say goodbye. You know, he was, and and then he like popped out of his accent. He's like, "Oh, thank you for coming." You know, it's like, "Oh, it was so great." Today. <laughs> and we're like, "We're like, oh my god, he came out. <laughs> He's actually not American. Uh, <laughs> we knew this, but you know, uh, but yeah, no, it was it was a real pleasure working with him." Oh, that's cool. That's that's a really good story as well. My parents during COVID literally have just gone on a on like a. A streak of just watched season uh, five to eight in house was were you in any of those seasons? Did, did they see a li- Did they see Marcus? Did they see you recently? Um, you know, I don't remember what season I was in. I think I was in in one of those middle seasons. I was. I definitely wasn't in the last few. Mine was like a, a cop who has like a a heart condition or something like his his father his father and his grandfather like they all died in their 40s of heart attacks and he was just expect you know he was just expecting it to happen but then it turns out that no he has a hereditary problem um but it can be now it, it can now be fixed or there, there is now a treatment for it and he didn't it's, know uh, it's season six. Oh, okay oh then <laughs> they, ha- they have not had the pleasure <laughs> Of seeing me work. Oh no, they have. They they watched um, season oh, five, said, to five, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, five, oh, two, oh, eight. Okay. Yes, they've seen you. So I'll, I'll call them. Lucky them. <laughs> if you would like to know for your IMDb page or or anything, it's the episode is called Braveheart. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your episode. That is forever going to be known as Marcus's episode. <laughs> well i've got a couple little bits of trivia here and then we will dive on in so there actually wasn't too much trivia about the movie but if people that write things on the internet um, listen to this podcast then already there's so many more trivia sort of factoids and tidbits that you've already given out here that you know should belong on the internet somewhere because uh, it's not documented anywhere else so We'll count that as an as exclusives that you've broken on our podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the first one I've got is uh, Devin Sauer was fifteen uh, while during the filming of this movie, so he was much taller than his ten year old castmates. So he can actually be seen wearing only socks in some scenes. Like, do you, do you recall that? Um, you know, I I don't remember. It could be lies. I got this from the internet. It's full of lies. So. I don't recall. I mean, I could imagine it was just he just didn't want to put on shoes for something. You know, like that. Yeah. Okay. We'll go with that. Um, so as <laughs> as we sort of suggested earlier or said, uh, the movie was inspired by an early uh, '90s McDonald's advert, um, and actually uh, ran during the Super Bowl. And I actually remember uh, hearing something about it that a big part of it was the sort of dads sort of holding their arms together to make, you know, like the, what do you call it? The field goal or whatever, Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. which actually ties back perfectly to you because that's like your part in the movie where you're kicking the the ball over. Um, All all of those terrible kicks are all me. Um, There's no, we didn't have a a bad kick double or anything like that. Um, 100%. I did all of my own kicking. Uh, uh, It was... Yeah, like, I think when we did that scene, they had two cameras facing each direction. So you would have me on one side and then the two dads uh, making the the field goal thing. So, yeah, a lot of those were just terrible, terrible kicks that I I did. Um, I I actually 
change kicking styles uh, out of nowhere. Um, because I think I was watching, did you guys, you've seen Ace Ventura? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there was a scene, you know, because this came out like before Little Giants, and I was like, the um, he's talking about the the kicker in the movie. He's like, he's a soccer style kicker, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what I'll do. I don't know football. I'll be, um, I'll be a, a I'll be a, I don't know American football. I'll play, I'll kick the ball like I'm world football player. Um, and so I, uh, yeah, I was kicking that way every time you see the bad kicks. And then at the end, when I make the field goal, uh, I, I, I completely, it's just a straight on, you know, top of foot kick <laughs> to make it. Yeah. My, my actual biggest laugh out loud moment came from you at the end uh, towards the end of the movie where you kick johnny in the balls and then the yeah. commentator says someone's holding a pound of aunt betty's nut butter yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was like why do i feel like that was a a harry sheer um improvised line there <laughs> yeah it was definitely an add-in <laughs> yeah I was like that's just as dirty as they could make it you know <laughs> <laughs> well, so I read online that there were plans to do a sequel, which never materialised, which I guess probably maybe had something to do with it, you know, not quite recouping its budget until we get our GoFundMe page online. Um, yeah, yeah. But did that's were, all Warner Brothers is waiting for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they'll green light it. Was um was there? Did you ever hear of any sort of murmurs or rumours of a of a sequel that might come? The kids, we had, um, we always had dreams of a sequel, you know, uh, whether it be we were making it up, sitting around, you know, chatting with each other. Um, uh, but I never heard anything about an official, like from Warner Brothers or Amblin about doing a sequel. Although I feel like you could probably, you could probably do one now and you could just make it the kids of all the, uh, of all the former giants and cowboys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with, with Disney Plus. They're doing a, a Mighty Ducks uh, TV show. And mm -hmm. um, I think some of that is elements that they're doing is where it's like the next generation, but now the Mighty Ducks are actually the antagonists in it. So oh. it, it would be cool if one day maybe there's a, uh, you know, a little giant's, TV show, it can go down a much darker path. <laughs> <laughs> like like the Batman versus Superman of uh, Little Giants. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, I mean, or, you know, like you're saying, like Cobra Kai, um, you know, where maybe it's, yeah, it's just uh, someone's a washed, <laughs> maybe Icebox is a washed up Pee Wee football coach <laughs> or, a, or a washed up uh, college coach. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's. I mean, ha, did you have you seen Cobra Kai? No, I haven't. I I really want to because isn't Daniel kind of a kind of an antagonist? Kind, yeah, kind of. They kind of. Yeah. It, it goes back and forth. They kind of. Yeah. Uh, both go. You kind of see it from both perspectives, but um, it's re it's done really really well. So um, it definitely shows that it can be done. So yeah, who knows? Once Warner Brothers get their uh, money back, then it's uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cl clearly Harry, that's Harry all they're Potter waiting for. Made enough money. Yeah, they're just they're just waiting for that little bit. They're just like you know when when it comes in, when home video sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then they can attribute it to our podcast, and then that would yeah. be great. And then more people will come on. Todd will come on, and then you can say I was there at the beginning of the Mighty Nineties <laughs> podcast. <Yeah. laughs> you know this whole this whole uh, sequel is really thanks to. Only me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Gary uh, Boosie and Randy Quaid were originally cast as the leads. Did you ever hear that? Oh, I did not. I did not hear that. That would have been a very different movie. Very. Um, yeah. Uh, those aren't those aren't both of those guys um, insane now? I, was, <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah. Diagnosed. I mean... Uh, diagnosed and everything. <laughs> well, Gary Busey is is yeah off the rails a little bit, isn't he? he yeah. Uh, all I just always remember Gary Busey from Lethal Weapon and his teeth, and <laughs> him fighting Riggs on the uh, front yard. 
You know, every, yeah. and, and the police just allow it to happen because, you know, 90s. Or was that 80s yeah. even, maybe, the first lethal weapon? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, great. great Gary Busey. And then Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. Oof, that would have been... Um, oh, but was it, wouldn't that have been... He probably... Uh, he was probably doing Independence Day at that time, wasn't he? Wasn't that the same... Around the same time? I... It may be, yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Flying into the butt of a alien ship. You know? <laughs> the uniforms uh, worn by the cowboys uh, in the movie were the same ones worn by the real life Dallas Cowboys during the 1994 season as part of the NFL's 75th anniversary. So that also ties in a little bit to the Mighty Ducks, where at the end of the second movie they wear the uniform that then the Anaheim Ducks in the NHL mm-hmm. go on to wear um you know in that next season so bits of sort of product placement i guess and uh yeah which is cool i mean something i have to ask you so um i do a little bit a little bit of prop collecting so i have a couple of the like the jerseys from the mighty ducks that were actually used in the movie and i actually have a few people that i know that also collect this is a very very nerdy thing to talk about when I hear myself saying it out loud. <laughs> but a lot of these people are also obsessed with the little giants. And uh, one of my um, associates, I'll call them, or uh, other collectors, uh, they all wanted me to ask you what happened to the original uh, like jerseys that you wore and like the helmets and stuff. Like, is it something that, um, did you get to keep any of it or is it in a box at Warner Brothers somewhere? I believe every little giant, their parents have it somewhere in their garage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, we have, uh, I, I have it somewhere at home at my mom's uh house she has the the jersey and the helmet i think that's what they gave us i don't think they gave they may have given us the full like leg pads and stuff um i think todd has his um one of my one of the other little giants he only had one line so there were like three um uh hidden little giants that are that are not in the movie as much um uh, God, I only remember one of their last names. Eddie, um, Eddie Durham. He's he's the guy who has the line, you know, like uh, they give out the antacids to, or the the, the, the Alka Seltzers to each of us to make our our mouths drool. Intimidation. He has the line. Uh, what are these for? Yeah, I noticed that on my viewing just now, um, and I said it to my wife. I was like, "Hey, there are extra kids here." Yeah, yeah, and they were with us the whole time. They were. They were there uh, when we were doing uh, football training, but you know they were they were extras. They didn't they didn't have a part for them, um, but they were there the whole time, uh, uh, filming and training for you know football training, and it was Wesley and um, oh god it was um, I think it was was there two Eddies. God, oh man! But there, there's three extra, three other little giants, and you know they, uh, I'll have to get all their names together and, you know, put them in the facts of uh, little of the IMDb trivia. Um, but yeah, they, <laughs> they're the other guys, and they were with us the whole time while filming. Um, and uh, you, like one of them gets a part. Uh, you, uh, there's a tackle that happens, and they're like, oh, he's taking you know the little giants tackle one of the guys, and it's and that's Wesley. He was a kind of a lanky. Uh, lanky African American guy, um, and then there was uh, yeah Eddie White Kid, and yeah it was it was um, it was fun. They were they were they were with us. We didn't really think that they were not like. Sometimes there's this idea of like oh I'm the I'm the lead, you're supporting character, you're somebody else, right? But really for that when they we were always kind of all treated the same, uh, and we were all we were all together. Um, but yeah, we all. I think we all have the jerseys. We all have our helmets, uh, and we may have the pads, the the leg pads. I don't think they give us the the shoulder pads for the for the game. But yeah, I, I don't know where mine is. I think my mom has it in her garage. Um, Todd's mom probably has it framed on a wall. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Eddie Eddie just posted something on on Facebook that I saw because I think he was showing his kids little giants, and so he. Uh, 
uh, I think they were doing like a dress up thing, and he put he put he pulled the old the old uh, jersey out. That's very cool, very cool. I mean, prized possession, of course. If you ever decide that you want to sell them, then I I have okay. like a line of people that would. But of course, oh, okay. sell it to me first. <laughs> but um, yeah, sure, sure, sure. You know, if you ever go down a Gary Busey hard time or anything, yeah, yeah, I need to, <laughs> I need to get my uh, teeth redone, so I, I gotta sell that jersey. <laughs> yeah, let me know. I'll hook you up with a new set of teeth. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, excellent. Well, uh, oh wait, one more. So. Uh, shortly after the movie was released, the real-life New York Giants, um, who the Little Giants were named after, actually introduced a solid red alternate jersey similar to the ones uh, in the movie to sort of celebrate that. Did you Did you ever know that? No, I never knew that. Um, I, yeah, I, I never heard that. That was that's cool. Like, uh, I think I heard one other thing. There was some pro football team that uh, oh that that did the annexation of puerto rico no way yeah i think there was some protein or maybe it was a, a pretty prominent like college team they they did the play and they scored a touchdown that's awesome i'm sure that yeah. must live on youtube somewhere oh so it, I, to... I think it does it's kind of a, it's it's amazing because yeah, that whole for that play to even work um for that play to work you need chaos on the field i think and that's it's like what they try to avoid, you know, defense and offense. So uh, that the fact that it worked is kind of amazing. Awesome. Love that. Cool. Well, um, we will dive on into the movie, if that is okay. Um, sure. So we start with these animated credits and we get the whistle blowing and then we have the mm -hmm. Amblin Entertainment logo coming up. Just out of curiosity, sorry, before we, before we begin... Um, is this a movie that you've seen a lot of times or because you're in it, you find it difficult to watch or like, or you find you watch it differently because obviously you know how it was filmed and everything or roughly how many times would you say you've seen this movie? Um, maybe like 20 times. Um, you know, obviously most of those when I was younger, I think, you know, we went to go see it with family and stuff when, when it first came out and I saw it maybe like five times then. And then like throughout the years, every couple of years might, might watch it. Um, there was a few years ago where um, like, you know, Todd and I would, we'd be hanging out and there'd be a party and someone would be like, they're little drugs, just watch little giants. And we'll be like, okay. And then we made like a drinking game out of it. Um, <laughs> or we would just, you know, share, uh, dumb stories about things that happened on that filming or just things that we because you've seen it so much so much that you just kind of point out silly things um yeah well it's awesome if i if i was in the little giants i would watch it like a million times i mean i've probably <laughs> i reckon i've probably seen it uh probably more than 20 times and i wasn't in the movie and, and don't well, we yeah, know actors in, in watching yourself sometimes you only see the bad things you're just like oh god that was terrible <laughs> what yeah. did i do so you can be sort of self-critical yeah yeah and dom just the one time but dom has an amazing memory he remembers all these little details so dom watching it once is like me watching it 10 times so <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> thanks <laughs> <laughs> no question now yeah so we get the, uh, the Amden logo, and then we get the Little Giants logo that comes on the screen, which is really awesome. I love that logo. Um, I wish that I wish that there was more stuff with it. Like, I wish that, you know, it was... I mean, it is a cult classic, but I wish it had a bit more of a following so that they would do, like, you know, T-shirts with that logo on and stuff like that, because I think that would, uh, that would be awesome. Yeah, you know, I think if the movie hadn't gone over budget and over um schedule you there probably would have been more things out there um but with uh with uh home video i remember you know buying it on home video when it first came out and it came with pogs do, do you know pog yeah do you, pog? Do, you, do you know what's funny you saying that is uh, i actually have the pog that you're talking about is on the pin board in front of me right now oh okay <laughs> yeah that's what 
that's what they all came with. So yeah, I'm sure we have a, a, a giant box of them somewhere at home as well. That's hog. That's awesome. Yeah, pogs. What a, what a weird time. <laughs> yeah, the '90s, man. The '90s. <laughs> the uh, I I think maybe for us to do our you know our fundraiser to help the little giants hit its budget or to exceed it, perhaps that's what we could do. We could start selling t-shirts that these that people want now and that will help us to raise the money it's all going to tie together yeah it's perfect <laughs> so we open up in Abania, which i paused it to try and get the population that's make this into a game we'll start with you dom dom what do you think the population of Abania is oh god i completely missed that it's written on the uh water the water tower Oh, 1,903. Marcus? Uh, 15,000? So I think that I'm reading this right. I like freeze-framed it, but it was still hard to see. So I thought it was 8,412, and my wife thought it was 8,612. Listeners, let us know in the comments. Let's work this out. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, we get this... um, really nice opening music it's kind of the theme the did you get it from that perfect thank you which it kind of reminded me as a little bit home alone like so it's funny that you said john williams earlier don but it kind of did have that sort of you know 90s family score to it and we open up in 1962 in ohio like we said Kevin and Danny are walking down the road and it's great casting here because the guys that are playing young Kevin and young Danny are sort of doing the mannerisms that Rick Moranis and Ed O'Neill will do later in the movie. Kevin sort of chewing the gum, etc. And the kid that's actually playing young Danny uh, gets used again in the 13th year. That was um, done by Dwayne Dunham later. So he obviously likes to sort of recycle talent, I guess. Oh, and then also um, the guy who plays young Danny uh, was in the movie Big Bully, which was another Rick Moranis movie after. And he plays young Rick Rick Moranis again. Uh And the guy who plays the young antagonist uh, is Michael Zweiner, who is Zoltek. Ah, very cool. So definitely recycle, like, you know, getting comfortable and, you know, thinking of the actors again for other roles, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. We get the spaces or laces and uh, Danny, it's not even that Danny's picked last. He just doesn't even get picked, which is super harsh. And this is where we get the introduction of, you know, look at it my way. I'm so good. It makes you look bad. And then Patty comes in. Oh, you're not playing today. No, I'm on the injured list, which is heartbreaking. And then we see the water tower and Kevin saying, we're going to own this town, you and me, the kicks the ball up, ball comes down, and actually it's just Kevin O'Shea on the water tower. Mm. What a great opener. Dom, how did you find this opener as a first-time viewer? I thought the um, the, the, the kind of... He's doing a description of a, of a football match, isn't he? Of a football game, sorry, young Rick Moranis. So he's describing a play. Uh, and even when he like accidentally drops the ball, he's like, "Oh, the the ball's loose," but then manages to recover it. And it, um, you know, his older brother is kind of ignoring him. And having an older brother, I I completely appreciate his position <laughs> in that he he's just completely ignored. Um, and then when they they get to picking the teams and he isn't picked, um, it's a little bit heartbreaking. Um, and that's kind of where I thought the the story was gonna develop from and that's you know absolutely where it does it's it's you know our names are going to be on that water tower and then all of a sudden ball goes up and it comes down and it's one name on the water tower not not both of them uh and it, it absolutely you know sets the sets the scene and sets the tone for for kind of the rest of the films like oh, okay there's a little bit of rivalry here uh how is this going to play out and i thought you're yeah, a great way to start we then move to the cowboy tryouts and uh, Icebox tackles uh, Zoltek, and this is the great moment where he has his sandwich in his helmet, which is brilliant. Yeah. 
and uh, and a great line that I loved here is Kevin saying, "Oh, Cheetos, are they uh, crunchy or puffed? Crunchy or puffed? <laughs> puffed, <laughs> wimp. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I mean, yeah. assuming that obviously you, your character doesn't come into play at this point, so where, I mean, were you on? on set at all for these moments just watching or were these just like days off for you um no i was not there when they fil- i think that was one of the first things they filmed uh in the uh show in the movie um but i think that was something like the i think that was the audition uh scene for zoltec because i i told you i'm i auditioned for zoltec originally yeah and i think that might might have been uh, the the scene we auditioned with. So yeah, I have v- very vivid memories of that scene, even though I wasn't in it. Yeah. And I think it's just because that was I did I had to know that scene. Right. So it's like yeah, you knew it, but you just it wasn't committed to film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a great moment here where Hayden, sorry, is uh, talking to his hands, <laughs> which. Oh. Uh huh. I love that, and uh, and we get like the the buddy kids and saying something, you know, can he catch anything? Well, I caught cold last week, and basically just blows snot on him, <laughs> which, you know, you can't do that today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, how, how times have changed because this post COVID nineteen world. <laughs> yeah, that that's like attempted murder if you were to do that. Yeah, right now. <laughs> I think in so, I think in the US we'll charge you with uh, terrorism if you do that. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, something, like that come, that, though. something that comes up quite a lot uh, in our podcast is we, we discuss the uh, the differences in in kind of like the, the 90s to now and what you would get away with in films then that you definitely couldn't go in a film now. And oh, that yeah. is almost certainly something we couldn't do now. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to the, the running trial and we get the... <laughs> We get Tad's running where he's like really giving it but not getting anywhere. And I I really related to this because I've never been a fast runner. And I'm also someone that like my limbs when I run don't seem to sort of be, you know, working in the cooperation with my body. They seem to just <laughs> go wherever they want to go. So I, uh, I could sympathize with that. And then we get Zoltec that's, uh, you know, slow. And we get a great line here from Kevin yeah. who's saying, uh, you know, what time did I get? Oh, I don't know. I don't have a sundial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a good one. I love it how mean he is to the kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. Uh, we get the buddy kids again. They're being mean to, uh, to Icebox and, uh, you know, basically because she is a girl. But... In great fashion, she sticks up for herself, puts him in a headlock, and uh, and then uh, enters Danny, Rick Moranis, you know, let him go. She does, and he goes to sit with Karen, Kevin's wife, and she's saying, he's saying, you know, how's Icebox doing? She's the best one out there. So we then get to the selection of the team. And as we know, uh, you know, people were getting chosen. And then the last person to get chosen... uh, Oh, before that, sorry. We get the speech from Kevin and Becky knows what the speech is and is sort of mouthing it along with him. You know, my All-American trophy, my Heisman trophy, this, that and the other. Like, he said it a million times. And now he's going to bring a Pee Wee championship. And, uh, you know, all the kids just... Uh, like rad just sorry tad just wants one of those shirts all the kids get called except for of course um the ones that are left that are going to be the giants and it's heartbreaking the skittles fall on the floor the music scores it beautifully yeah and then danny comes over to have these sort of touching moments of you know this really sucks you know is there anything we can learn from this and I think that's played really well. Rather than just sort of smoothing it over, it is actually, it's okay for it to suck and for there to be, it to be negative and not to try and, you know, cover it up, you know? Yeah. How did you find this one, Dom, as a first time viewer? We, we have this other thing on our podcast that Dom has no emotion, he's dead on the inside. So 
I mean, did this? Well, obviously. Oh, yeah, you picked that up, of course. I mean, Dom, <laughs> did did you uh, did this evoke any emotion? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't cry at films. Simon will will just you know cry at a film at, at the the appropriate places to cry, but I seem to just not be able to. I just, <laughs> just plow through. Um, but the the team selection side of it, I th- you know, was particularly harsh considering uh, Icebox is the, the best player by by a country mile, and you know she's displayed that she she can do absolutely everything that that is required. But it, and it's literally just a case of she's a girl, she's not getting picked. Uh, and that you know the other guys on the team uh, that, that don't get selected as well. Sorry, that are trying out that don't get selected, uh, not being given the chance. It kind of it really reminded me of uh, the beginning of Celtic Pride. Yeah, uh, when he's like screaming at the kids um, to to do this play and that play, and it 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 kind of has that same sort of feel to it. That actually, this is a, an adult that takes it way too seriously and doesn't let kids just be kids. Completely, yeah. completely. I was, you know, maybe you guys know. Um, the does it ever say that Kevin O'Shea goes pro after he won the Heisman? That's a good question. I don't because think. I don't, I don't think. I think it's his high school and college is as far as he yeah. goes. Yeah, the Heisman is is for college players. Yeah. So it's kind of like, and he's how old is he supposed to be in this movie? Like forty something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he wins the Heisman, and he goes back to his small town that has. Uh, eight thousand people. Yep, <laughs> and he's a like a a legend in that town. He's like a local hero. Yeah, but it never says he goes pro. So he's definitely not uh, nationwide famous. Uh, he's <laughs> he's he's a man of small <laughs> small victories, I guess. Well, that might he's, actually... he's going to be one of these. Sorry, he's going to be one of these guys that's tried out for the Dallas Cowboys that's why he's called his peewee team the Cowboys <laughs> and has never actually made it <laughs> I I think that maybe this could uh, fill in a plot hole that actually comes a little bit later where Spike's dad uh, confuses Kevin for being uh, Danny for being Kevin but you'd think if yeah. he's such a big football fan that he would know what Kevin looks like right yeah, but so, but perhaps maybe because it was just college level, he you know he hasn't seen him on TV or, or something like that, you know. And plus, there was no Google back then. But yeah. maybe he didn't make it to a point so far that otherwise, you know, that would have created we wouldn't have been able to have that joke. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we get to a uh, family meal at Kevin's house, and uh, his like little girl is doing the prayer. And then we get to this sort of family conversation of why didn't you pick Becky and Karen, his wife, saying, you know, women can run for president. Women can do this. Women can do that. But women can't play football. And he's, he's basically just like, yep, that's right. And uh, he's then saying, actually, let's get girls involved. So he says to his older daughter, we need cheerleaders. We need this. We need that. Which, again, I guess is showing some of his uh you know sexism i guess mm-hmm. and uh i wouldn't say misogyny but you know it's uh yeah it is it goes at his very worst kevin o'shea is just a sexist yeah exactly <laughs> well i actually thought at that point that we would go down like a, a misogyny road shall we say and he would get kind of worse as the film went on but he he actually really didn't no, he, he is a very well-rounded character and there's actually points where you think, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a nice guy, really. He's just, and, you and know... a decent uncle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, Danny then is uh, trying to cheer up Becky. He's saying, we could go to the woods and make moose sounds. <laughs> 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 and we get... That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> What else to do on a Friday night, you know? Um, we get a little bit of exposition that uh, that the mum left. Uh, she made a choice, and uh, in that choice, they made a choice for us. And so maybe like this, by not being picked for the team, maybe that freed you up to do something else. So he's trying to pull the positives out, and you can see that he's a good dad and a trying dad. So these are all 
really nice uh, setup moments. And I guess you also see the difference between uh, Kevin's house and Danny's house that, you know, one is sort of upper middle class and one's kind of lower middle class, I guess. Good. So... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the... Yes. Uh, is this... Uh... No, no, that's... Um, there's a scene There's a scene later. No, man, that's not... This one's, yeah, they're just doing that. We we then get to uh, the sort of kid lair, I guess. And I, f- I forget his name, so Marcus, hopefully you'll know. But, like, you know the science kid, the blonde kid that's... Newbie. Oh, that is Newbie, okay. Yeah, Matthew, his, Matthew McCurley. He's brilliant. Every time I see him or watch this again, I'm like, ah, oh, my old friend. <laughs> like, he... Was he a cool kid? What was he like? Oh, yeah. Uh, he is. I, I think he's a lawyer now. Like of course, a, he he followed in what you would expect him to do. That um, that shed. Uh, so uh, maybe, uh, what was it? Maybe like five or so years ago, six years ago, there was. Um, so we filmed all of that in San Luis Obispo, which is kind of near uh, Santa Barbara, California. So yeah. it's on the coast, and um, they had a. Uh, well, it's not San Luis Obispo. It's called it, the town is called Arroyo Grande, um, and uh, they had a film festival out there, and it was like an anniversary of Little Giants, and so they asked me and Todd and Shauna if we could come out, you know, for the for the the, the showing, and we you know we do a Q and A after, and so we said yeah, and so since we were there, we're like well let's go to Arroyo Grande, let's you know see the old stomping grounds, and. Um, they had uh they had torn down the gas station and built a new gas station but the shed in the back that we that we filmed at that was the meeting the kids layer was still there that's awesome yeah um and you know honestly it was also rebuilt on the universal lot you know um later to to film other parts of it but it was it was still just sitting there just being a shed (laughs) (laughs) and so we took we took pictures in front of it very but, uh, cool. Yeah, it was, it was it was interesting being back in that town as adults. That's very cool. Very cool. I'm sure a lot of people would want to take. If I was there, I'd want to be taking pictures there. I'm almost mapping out a trip for my wife and I without letting her know that we'll, that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just end here. I'll just be like, hang on a second. I just need to uh, just go find the shed real quick because <laughs> just the creepiest thing said. <laughs> oh no, it's I a don't... creepy shed. It's just a, d- do a just mighty 90s apart. trip. What was that, Dom? Do a mighty 90s road trip? Yeah, definitely. Sounds good to me. So we then move, yeah, so we're in this sort of the shed and uh, the bullies then arrive and they come in and they give Newbie a wedgie, which is very uncalled for. I mean, it, it's a private establishment. He lets them know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're trespassing now, so very unacceptable. Uh, we then suddenly uh, Icebox arrives on the go kart, which is awesome, and we then move into this Mad Max style chase scene through the forest. That go kart was really cool. Like, did you ever get to like have a go in that or anything? Or oh was that... my god, we all wanted to do that golf cart so bad. They uh, raffled it off at the end of the shoot. No way. To one of the kids. And the person who got it was the youngest daughter of Kevin O'Shea. She must have been like five. She couldn't even get in the go kart. <laughs> <laughs> but that that little girl is uh, Alexa Vega, who was in Spy Kids. And um, if you see, if you look her up, she's got a bunch of credits too. I mean, she's she was she was going to be. I think there was a, a period of time they were trying to make her a a star um, in the like late mid. 2000s it's <laughs> very cool well i know that the helmet that was uh for the go-kart the skull bones and the cross and skull bones on was uh was on ebay like a few years ago and uh so someone has that i like <laughs> this is like before i was like into sort of prop collecting so if i am so sad that I don't have that. Not that I would wear it or anything. It definitely wouldn't fit my, you know, adult man head. But um, (laughs) 
it's still uh you know it's still cool so there we go so we we have this sort of chase through uh through the forest which is great and it's got great sort of uh you know uh sound effects and, and that sort of thing Icebox knocks the bullies off the bike. She knocks uh, Sean Murphy into into the river and says, you know, we've started our own team. And he's sort of laughing like, yeah, who's your coach? My dad. She turns it around, sprays mud in his face, which is exactly, as an audience member, what you want to happen in that moment. So that's brilliant. And, uh, yeah, it was... What was the, what was Sean Murphy like in, in real life? I've seen online, I think it's like part of a rock band now or something like that yeah i mean uh uh joey was was cool back in the day you know he was just uh i don't really know what to to say about him we didn't have any issues he was like i said all the kids kind of hung out together um uh yeah i mean he just we i remember seeing him years after oh i went to go see him that's what he went to a school he went to a, a a high school like I don't know, an hour away from where I live. And he was doing a, a high school musical there. Um, and so I went to go see him. But that was like, God, maybe two, the year 2000 or the year, uh, you know, something something even earlier. But um, yeah, I mean, I haven't really seen him since. You know, it's kind of everyone, you know, you, you spend so much time with these people for like three months, four months, and then everyone just kind of goes their separate ways. Um, so really the person I talk to the most regularly is, is Todd. Wow. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, he's in a, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, Joey's in a, a, a rock band or, or something. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think he has kids. I think. I don't nice. know. <laughs> well, it's cool. I mean, yeah, you're kind of all bonded together through this, through this yeah. movie. But then like you said, you go on and, you know, you live your own lives. So Yeah. Well, we move to Kevin uh, selling cars at his dealership, and uh, he's like, you know, yeah, he's like the guy. People are taking pictures with him, like the customers. He goes to lunch, and he goes to, like, this diner where he's sort of telling his old football war stories to the old men in the diner. The old guys in the diner are awesome, like secondary yeah. cast members. They have some great moments in the movie. I mean, I don't think the kids don't really share any scenes with them. So, I mean, no. did, you didn't. I, did you get to meet them, or I guess you probably probably not. No, I don't remember meeting them. But yeah, we do remember watching the movie, and those guys were hilarious because they're just trying to. I mean, it's like small town mentality. They're just trying to cause problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So mayor, the mayor comes in uh, to speak to uh, Kevin, and he says, "There's a turd in the punch bowl," <laughs> which <laughs> very descriptive, uh, descriptive way to say there's a problem. Yeah, no one wants a turd in the punch bowl. That's the last place you want a turd, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then Danny enters. Uh, well, the mayor's saying that there's now two teams, and you know, making making the man look like a fool. So Danny enters and Icebox very quickly tells him that, you know, we've started a team. And then straight away, Kevin comes up and sort of jumps down Danny's throat saying, you know, you're trying to make me look like an idiot. And he's trying to be like, whoa, 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 I just found out. But then Kevin takes it too far, really. It's like, you can't even play football. You know, guys like you, kids like that, you know, shouldn't be playing football. Should be doing the class projector. He says things like, my favourite line in this bit is, uh, you know, Einstein, could he catch? Did anyone care? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of, uh, it kind of sets the whole movie up. I mean, he's saying like, you know, I knew you'd see it my way. And he's like, no, I don't. Oh, yeah. I've never seen it your way. In fact, I hate it your way. So they, they the, the old men say, you know, let's have a playoff. That's a great idea, Wilbert. And two weeks from today, and you know, Kevin says, Danny, you don't stand a chance. And then Danny says, which sums up the whole movie really, is we just want to play. And I love that. It's kind of that one scene sets up the rest of the story. It's pretty much everything you need to know. But it also just sets out the, the key differences is that you don't have to be good at sports to enjoy playing them. Yeah. 
yeah it's i think that's I, honestly it's like a, a a lesson that we haven't learned you know is that you you hear about um kids or you know parents getting their kids so involved in in these you know what are supposed to be fun you know character building sports to where you know kids are getting like rotator cuff surgery at 15 or you know they they're uh, they're getting prescribed you know painkillers for um for strains in the muscles when really they should just not play you know um it's uh it, it's it's kind of something that you know it's uh it's a it's a problem and hopefully we can we can get back to the fact that maybe we maybe we should just have fun uh of playing sports uh rather than uh, you know getting too hard on our our kids Com completely i mean i've um i've volunteered with the special olympics here in the uk uh for a few years now and uh it's kind of it kind of really emulates into that or trans transfers into that because it's yeah people just want to play sport and it doesn't have to be about who's the best at it or you know about performing at a super high level it's just actually sport is fun and it's yeah. it's healthy for your body for your mind and it's why we all do it it's just for the enjoyment of it unless you are a professional athlete getting paid you know millions of dollars and pounds and whatever then okay sure take it super serious but <laughs> You know, yeah, if yeah. we're just playing for fun, then it's all good. I mean, Dom, as a first time viewer, when this was sort of being set up, I mean, was this was this the direction you was expecting it to go in or did you have no idea really? I, I think so. And you, you can kind of tell from um, Icebox and the way she feels about things that she's um, kind of like a stronger character and she won't let you know anything stand in her way and she'll go and make things happen which which is great um even you know managing to convince her dad to be a coach you know within six seconds of saying by the way we're going to start our own football team and then she just disappears and stands outside you know yeah <laughs> the, the, the diner watching through the glass like okay let's see how this unfolds because this is going to happen and uh and like you said the the whole just wanting to play sports thing it, i kind of have so much sympathy and empathy and an understanding of that because I've I've been rubbish at football so like soccer for pretty much my entire life but I love playing it and I'll play it at every opportunity <laughs> so I <can> really <laughs> I really get it, you know get their side of it and, and why they just want to play well you're not bad at football so <laughs> so shit uh, I am I'm 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 terrible at football slash soccer it's uh I've tried playing it many times, and I'm just like, uh, uh, this is this is bad. To uh, ask or make sure to ask Todd about um, soccer or football. He'll have a he'll have a story for you. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> look forward to that. Yeah, <laughs> we have this uh, confrontation, and then Danny comes out of the diner, and the kids cheer like, you know, thank you. You know, you're gonna you s stood up for us, and then. We move to the infamous train track scene where it's time to montage and recruit a team. And the first kid we recruit is Marcus. <laughs> and uh, and Dom, you actually, you text me this line earlier when you were watching the movie, which is Marcus's <laughs> first line, which is... Oh, God. Oh, oh Dom, was it? <laughs> I was like, am I supposed to say it or is he supposed to say it? And Dom was supposed to say it, but I think he's oh, okay. choking. You know, like in Eight Mile, and they're like, he's choking. <laughs> Are you still choking, Dom, or have you got it? I am still choking. It's nothing but glass. Uh, nothing Yay! but glass. You looked on your phone, didn't you? I did. I, <laughs> back. I was like, it's glass, it's glass. Something to do with glass. <laughs> Something to do with glass. Marcus, I am... So sorry. I really want to apologise for Dom's embarrassment. <laughs> um, shall, I, shall I just go? <laughs> I, just, I don't want... You better not mess up again. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you remember filming that scene? Where you obviously, you're kicking the, the, the ball against uh, the wall and then it's yeah, smashing into the, into the yeah. windows. The, 
you know, then we filmed those, compl- you know, like I was, they just threw a ball at glass to make it break, you know, but yeah, we filmed that. Um, I think it was just in some, I don't even know if the train tracks were there or if it was just some back alley in, in Arroyo Grande, but yeah, just there. And they were just like, kick these balls. And I was like, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I think I was just by myself. You know, I don't think the other kids were there. It, it's 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 so weird when you when you think about filming. You're like, yeah, the kids are there, and then we're filming. But like, no, I think they weren't there. We were just just doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, the train track scene was uh, was interesting. I think certain people couldn't. Todd, no, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 JP Stoyer couldn't be there. Uh, for the filming, I think, because he was working on a, a TV show called Grace Under Fire, which he was a regular. Okay. And um, I think he had to film something for that show, so he couldn't be there that day. Uh, and so they got uh, they got somebody else. They got Todd's brother to pretend to be uh, J.P. Stoyer. So they actually like, put him in his clothes and uh, did his hair a certain way. And so it's like, that's obviously not him. He doesn't walk that way. That's... <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely somebody else in the background. Wait, sorry, which which character name is that? Sorry, um, that's uh, um, uh, uh, Johnny Venero. Oh, Johnny, right, 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 right. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't notice that. So I will look out for that on my next yeah, viewing. Yeah, no, it's uh, it it is uh, it, more than anything, it's uh, silly because it looks they just needed somebody, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we also then we get um newbie and he's going to come up with creative plays uh, to help danny we then get which is something that definitely wouldn't happen in 2020 we have uh, like the cowboy kid that's oh, outside uh-huh. the supermarket unattended and danny yeah. thinks it's a good idea to recruit him to a football team which he repeatedly says he has no interest in <laughs> 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 well, I thought I thought this the, the entire way through that like little scene is that this is this um, I feel awkward watching this now because I know that this is definitely not allowed, and and he like pats him on the leg at one point as well. And I'm thinking yeah. oh, maybe you shouldn't have touched him, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't touch don't touch the child. Don't touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. But, it's it's Urbania. There's only eight and a half thousand people there. Everyone knows everyone. This yeah. <laughs> it's the kind of town you can leave your door open at night you don't have to lock up or anything like that it's safe well was um I, i've never known his character's name he's always just been cowboy kid to me do, do you know his character's name marcus um damn it i know his i know his real name that's take <laughs> we'll take his real name yeah christopher Wahlberg. he was in he was in a bunch of episodes of uh of hey arnold as well ah that's um, cool what the hell was his? What was the character's name? Did it? It doesn't say on IMDb. Uh, I'll find out. I'll find out. But anyway, so from there we go. Uh, who else did we? Um... We get. Uh, then we get Johnny. He's very sad on his doorstep um, because his dad, you know, keeps going uh, away on business, and mm-hmm. um, they they cast him really well because he looks like the the dad, the actor playing his dad and him because they look yeah. like they could be father and son. Uh, Timmy, his name's Timmy. The Timmy, yeah, kid. yeah. Timmy Moore, nice. Oh, quick question for you actually, Marcus, just while I'm looking at this. So they named your character Marcus, which is great for you. Yeah. I'm assuming they just did that out of these, right? Yeah, I, I think they, uh, like I said, I auditioned for Zoltec. So I auditioned for, they cast a bunch of kids they liked, and I think they only had like, four kids written um and so they basically kind of gave these parts to different people so like um i think the ones that they had originally was like yeah becky jr zoltek tad hannon and spike uh, yeah i mean of those characters and then like i think the the bad kids they kind of split them up you know because honestly they're kind of interchangeable they're the bad kids Mm -hmm. Um, and then i think me and timmy john i I auditioned for johnny venero as you know that was they were like oh why don't you read those lines today um and 
yeah, it was just a lot of a different, you know, just kind of changing lines around who gets, you know, oh, this makes more sense for this one. This is this kid. Um, and so, yeah, I think they just were like, yeah, it's Marcus. It's, let's just make it. I think they were probably towards the end of having to do it. And they're like, just make it easier on ourselves and name him Marcus. Um, I probably played a Marcus like three or four times in my career. So. <laughs> well, Will, Will Smith once said that the best bit of advice he ever got was from, uh, oh, I've forgotten his name, the guy that played Carlton in The Fresh Prince. Uh, 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 Alfonso Alf- Rivero. No. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Alfonso said to him, oh, in The Fresh Prince, you should just name your character Will Smith. And uh, he was like, yeah, that was like the best advice he got because then he was just, it just helped him to be even more famous, I guess, or that, you know, the character yeah. of the Fresh Prince basically was just Will Smith in real life anyway. So, yeah, maybe it's a blessing to be Marcus. Yeah. When people say your name, you just say what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we then move to the next scene where we're at the uh, sort of the gas station, which in, has the, you know, the lair behind it, etc., which on this viewing, I realise, is actually right next to the water tower, conveniently. Huh. <laughs> I never noticed that. <laughs> We're in the opening scene. That water tower was in the middle of a field. So I guess a lot changed in, like, the 70s and the 80s. Yeah, they started building... Uh, they built an old-style gas station right next to the water. It was all the rage, you know, industrialization yeah. gone wild. But, um, so this is where you guys are like putting on the old equipment and Timmy, the cowboy kid's putting on like a jock strap over his face. Mm-hmm. And uh, Zoltek's got like a Darth Vader style like helmet. I'm assuming that's what that was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. And then this is where we get introduced to uh, to Jake, so to Todd's character, and he comes in with his mum, and his mum is uh, saying about this pregnancy that she had, and uh, she had to spend nine months on her back, and if she rolled over, she could have lost him, <laughs> and uh, all this craziness. And uh, But, you know, football is going to be good for him. And then we get a beautiful early 90s CGI snot bubble, Yes. Which that's, is... Uh, it was great. Uh, yeah, you watch it now and you're like, that's... I think they tried to do things like a balloon or something. Or, or you know, maybe even... like I think they tried to use like some kind of like... Um, like, you know, bubble. Uh, uh, like, when you blow bubbles. Like, I think they were trying to get that on his nose and see if he could, you know, make it... I, I think they were like, okay, this none of this works. So they just uh, they just had to make a... Like I said, a bad CG uh, 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 bubble, it's not bubble. But yeah, that people, when they notice Todd on the street, they do call him like, oh, you're the snot bubble kid. <laughs> well, that's kind of <laughs> kind of like a bit of a meme as well, isn't it, that I'm sure is around. But the, um, I just, uh, again, in 2020, and especially during this COVID-19 times, you're certainly not going to be going around popping other people's snot bubbles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dom, how did you feel about the snot bubble popping? Uh, I thought it was a kind of like a. I thought we were going to step into a Who Framed Roger Rabbit kind of moment because it was that perfect like little cartoon <laughs> bubble that comes out yeah, of his nose. Yeah. I was like, oh, what's what's happening here? Is this is this like the American football version of Space Jam? <laughs> um, <laughs> And then, and then all of a sudden it burst, and he's like, "Thanks, I needed that." <laughs> Which, oh, wow, this is this is really weird. But it was just kids being kids, and I, I, I have no doubt that uh, even us as children had, had done something just as disgusting. So, <laughs> okay. um, but you're yeah, absolutely right; that would not make it <laughs> in a film now. We then move through to uh, the first lot of training. And, uh, you know, sort of showing all of the kids who are, you know, out of shape or not able to do the sort of various tasks, etc. And we get, like, the monkey bars, starting on the monkey bars. Um, Do you remember filming that? Like, were were you good on the bars? That was was fun uh, because I was like, hey, I could do the monkey bars back then. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But no, the uh, thing is, so when um, Jake... 
uh, when he, I think is it later in the montage, he's doing it and he can do it. Yeah. You know, he, he goes across and so we're all like, you know, cheering him on. We had to redub over that because we were all saying Todd. <laughs> we were saying his real name, cheering him on while he was doing it. Um, and so we had to, uh, so yeah, we had to go back into the booth after filming it. And then like, hey, you say Jake. And so you'll notice probably none of our mouths are matching what's being said. Wow. I'm <laughs> never going to be able to watch this the same way again. I'm seeing behind <laughs> the Iron Curtain right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great little nugget. That and all the murder. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bania, the murder yeah. capital of the world. Uh, uh, so we then move forward to the supermarket scene, which is classic. And I've actually seen a few memes and things on Instagram recently about people throwing around toilet paper. As you know, it's been like in high demand oh. during COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is brilliant. Uh, we get introduced to Junior who just seems to be, you know, causing a real mess in this grocery store, throwing this yeah, toy. <laughs> He's perfectly 90s dressed with that perfect hair that I wish I had. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to say, i just like to say that um, in the business that I work in, uh, that, that child would, would be removed from the store. <laughs> oh, yeah, in the, yeah. Did you just see <laughs> red when you saw that, Dom? <laughs> like, this is a valuable commodity now. You need to leave. Please stop <laughs> launching it across the aisle. He's actually just a delinquent, just loitering. <laughs> but, I mean, he's staying tidy. He's getting it in the trolley every time. So, you know, I'll let him off. It's actually... Yeah, the, yeah, the very least. Yeah, that's not so that's bad. The problem. Yeah, well, Icebox then goes on to cause um, a mess because she's spying on Junior and then she starts talking about herself in the third person because Icebox doesn't like boys. But yeah, she does. She likes that one. And then she sort of falls over when Junior sort of, you know, scares her through the uh, through the shelves. And, uh, and there we go. What they should have, what, what, what should have been put into the film at this point was a passive, aggressive supermarket worker going, <laughs> oh, what, uh, have I got to pick all that up now? Right. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, I've got it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll sort that out. Yeah, we then move through to Danny and Becky going to Junior's house, and they sort of hide by the front door, and we find Danny finds out that his mum is Patty Floyd. So again, in a very small town of 8,500 people, they've done well to avoid each other for like the last couple of decades. I, I, I have a feeling they've moved back. Like, that's, you like, Patty and her, like, she moved away and then she came back because, right, the fact that they don't know Junior and then they don't know, he doesn't know Patty. I'm assuming they just recently moved back. Mm, yeah, I like that. But so, then how else, how, but how would he not know that either cause if it's that small of a town? Right, well, it, it's summer, so it must be, he hasn't started school yet, so they yeah, moved yeah. away. She, Patty moved away, okay? She's had a child <laughs> with someone else, okay? It was, a, it was a romantic fling. They went across states on, you know, a road trip, and he was dangerous, <laughs> but she loved him, and she liked the danger, and he had a leather jacket. <laughs> and then, you know, eventually he broke her heart, the and then... She had to come back to Albania, but now she has a child. So she raised Junior in secret and has been homeschooling him. <laughs> and then now she's yeah. releasing him to the world because he has a perfect haircut. <laughs> wow. Can we... It, it grew out from the bowl haircut that he had before. And... <laughs> can we, as, as you were in the movie, can you approve that as canon that we can put out on... Just prove that... that... Um, yeah, like if we did a uh, spin-off movie of Patty Floyd's journey, it's like a, it's like a really like um, dark uh, thriller of a abusive husband. It's like uh, Invisible Man. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> oh, I have an alternate sure. theory. Let's hear it. Oh, that uh, that Danny's wife ran off with Junior's dad, <gasps> and and that left a massive like hole in their lives obviously so they have not had any contact or communication for for quite some time mm -hmm. um so this is then um you know this this football game has 
has put them back in contact and, and, and you know, maybe stirred up some old old memories of, of their childhood, but also brought back some, some of the pain of their partners disappearing. But, you know, brings them closer together, right? Yeah. Brings Patty and Danny together. So it worked out in the end. You know, sometimes yeah. you have to go through the pain to get to the good. But that's my theory on it. That's my. That's what I'm going with. Well, which one do you want to approve, Marcus? And we'll go. We'll go with your judgment. <laughs> um, oof. Okay, we, we, I think we have to go with the first one because at no point is it like an <laughs> awkward moment that, like, hey, your husband ran off with my wife. <laughs> I feel like that conversation would have been had that should, that uh, if that were the case. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough, <laughs> but it, there's nothing saying that can't that be the story later. Oh, I take that. find out. Take that. It's it's okay, Marcus. Dominic's just been embarrassing himself left, right, and center on this podcast today. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dom, please be professional. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Junior is the son of Sasha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, uh, right, so uh, they're sort of hiding each side of the of the doorbell and then the doorbell is on the side of that icebox is standing on. So in classic fashion, he rings it and then runs off and hides behind a tree. And then as Patty comes out, <laughs> Danny's still trying to sort of hide from her. Mm-hmm. But she sees him. By just closing his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that good old logic? If I can't see you, then you can't see me. Uh, Worth a try. And then, uh, but he gets invited in, and then, so we now know that, you know, Junior is going to be part of the team. So, Junior comes to training, and he's really good. Um, This is where uh, Jake arrives, and he has all of the padding on him. And he says... My mom didn't think the pads you gave me were enough, <laughs> which is a classic scene. Um, I mean, do do you remember like filming this? Did you have a lot of fun yeah. actually pushing him around? Because that would feel like it was it was one of those things. Like we were pushing him around, and then I think they the you know the people in charge were like, "All right, yeah, you can push him around. Don't push him around too much because we, <laughs> we don't actually want to break him." <laughs> so. There was kind of like, okay, well, let's let's push him in a circle, you know, so that it's a little more organized of how he's, you know, getting uh, uh, pushed around. So yeah, it was a, uh, 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 we we want the the fun uh, the fantasy aspect of it, but we want the reality of not killing Todd, right? Because he does yeah. then get pushed into a pole, <laughs> yeah, yeah, by Junior, I think, which I reckon is you know Ooh. some of his passive aggressive father issues. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, Dom, what did you uh, think of the pads on first viewing? It's, uh, uh, well, at first I thought he was in carpet <laughs> when he appeared, and then I realised uh, that he's in like massive loads of um, like foam, which I thought was brilliant. I thought this this kid has got so many problems, uh, or had so many problems growing up that he he needs to be in this. I thought if he's not in that, it's got to be some sort of bubble wrap uh, uh, that he needs to be covered in from like head to toe. Uh, and then he appears in that, and it was fantastic. He kind of looked like a, a a crash test dummy. I thought it was great. It's brilliant. <laughs> well, uh, we then move forward to the old men at the diner, and they're taking bets and. You know, who's going to have to... I'm going to sweep out the shop for a month if, you know, these boys don't win. And I think the odds are like 40 to 1 on, uh, you know, that the uh, the Giants are... I don't, I don't know how betting works, but I think I think it was 40 to 1. Yeah, the, the, the Giants are going to lose. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which are good I odds. I still don't know how the betting works, but... Someone, some people could have made some good money considering how this movie ends. Yeah, right. We uh, get some more training, but then we're starting to get some uh, some arguments. And uh, I wanted to ask you, Marcus, if you ever got any like PTSD from this, because um, I think it's Hayden says to you, "You're slow, and nobody likes you." No, 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 none of that. Um, I do have people yelling at me that I'm not invited to their birthday party. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
that's more like that always takes me a second to realize they're quoting me but i'm just like what why did i oh yes <laughs> what i say i was like why are you being so mean well, that's like a larger than life uh kind of um quote like that you know that sort of classic so yeah you saying that in the movie is uh is perfect <laughs> it's a great line and i'm sure that we've all thrown that one out in our childhood at some point the, yeah yeah exactly the power of having an upcoming birthday <laughs> so we then move through to uh yeah icebox is liking likes junior junior starts throwing toilet paper instead of uh the football and uh, Hayden's yeah. able to catch it, and then Danny says, "Okay, great, yeah. put this in the bathroom." <laughs> and <then> yeah, <laughs> that yeah, that was okay. Like, hey, we're gonna play with this from now on. Put that in the bathroom. That's brilliant. Have we have we gone past the bit where Junior throws throws the ball and it lands inside uh, the kid's helmet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which which terrified me because I thought, oh my god, he's just, like blinded another kid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that 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 special effect was way easier than anyone it was like they just pushed the helmet they pushed the football into the helmet <laughs> can you can you try and catch this with your face Go. yeah yeah they just pushed it in and then we'll do the quick pan the shoop, and then <laughs> yeah. <there. laughs> we actually then move to uh marcus and you're practicing your kicking with like the the adults like making the makeshift uh field goal and do you remember filming that uh yeah i mean yeah that was that was just all in the i'm trying to think we we moved we moved kind of slowly um that was the reason we went over over schedule but um yeah no we were just uh they just got the two guys um uh one of those guys the skinnier guy that's supposed to be timmy's dad and then the other heavier set guy is is zoltek's dad oh um, i never knew that and you might recognize him from uh peewee's big adventure Oh, I've actually never seen, never seen that. Oh, that's a bizarre movie. Uh, yeah, and he, all the Pee Wee stuff is uh, kind of bizarre. But yeah, he's <laughs> um, uh, so they're there standing, and yeah, I'm just like I said, you know, from from earlier, I was kicking it. I missed everything. Everything you saw that I missed, I missed. And the one where it comes, where he, the the dad tries to like kick it over, um. Is, you know when he gets it with his foot and i was like yeah i remember kicking that one and then him trying to get it with his foot um and uh yeah every, the best that best one was the best one where where it actually goes over i think they just didn't want to keep going <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant um we have icebox she tackles junior and she's just sort of you know crushing out on him we then move to uh kevin whoa 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 whoa, whoa. i've got to stop you there because you, you've stepped over another really kind of awkward moment where these are pre pre-teens kind of one on top of the other and it's oh yeah it's, she's still it's, laying on him yeah it's like oh you can get off me now and she's like oh can i that kind of thing and it's just a bit i felt i felt really awkward watching it <laughs> <laughs> although i think you know as long as it's the girl i think you might be able to get away with it oh okay makes it okay then maybe you know <laughs> for now for now, yeah. it'll switch up soon. But. Yeah, by 2030, that'll be out. But 2020, we're still yeah. okay. <laughs> so Kevin is then uh, knock. Uh, this is where Kevin has Becky on the sofa cushion, and this is where Kevin ends up uh, going out of the window and uh, oh, uh-huh. landing on the tree, making his own uh, his own uh, nut of butter. Um, and uh, yeah. and then falling into the uh, the pool, um, and then we get the great line of "Oh, doctor, <laughs> yeah. uh, Dom!" First time viewing. Did you did you uh, foresee him going out that window? Uh, I actually thought he was going to take out his wife. <laughs> I thought that that I thought, yeah, I, thought right. she, I thought she was going out the window. That was going to be. But the, we're all glad the, it didn't go that way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I I also wasn't expecting him to be upstairs. I thought they'd be like in a living room downstairs, sort of thing. Ooh, it's like uh, a townhouse, so maybe. Yeah, they've got they've yeah. got an upstairs living room. <laughs> yeah, which I did not expect at all. So when he like goes flying out window and then lands in a tree, I was like, oh. 
oh wow <laughs> they're upstairs well, the thing is dom is urbania went through this industrialization sort of kick in the 70s and 80s where they were building gas stations <laughs> and things so you know next to towers yeah <laughs> that's a that's, it's a brilliant scene uh what i like about that is like later on where they're like watching the the video back uh, as a yeah. family it's very sort of reminiscent of what you would actually be doing like you would love and watch be watching that on repeat yeah well we then get to the little giant sort of team announcing party that's at kevin's house which is really nice and uh you know this is sort of how it's supposed to be like making a fuss of each of the players and uh you know everyone's included and the parents are there and you know videoing it etc do you remember filming this marcus Uh, yeah you know that's uh um that is my real dad and that's playing my dad in the background hey that's awesome oh that's so cool yeah yeah, so my dad, my dad has been, uh, uh, he is now uh, on film on cellu- celluloid. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. really cool. No, he, uh, my dad passed away a few years ago, so it's kind of nice to think about those, you know, that he, you know, he gets to be on film as my dad. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, that's awesome that, yeah, he lives in infamy in the Little Giants. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's another trivia thing to put on the IMDb. The IMDb <laughs> and Wikipedia are about to be inundated with the little giants on the back of this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that alone could make seven hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just the information we're going to upload. <laughs> yeah, does IMDb pay for trivia? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, I have to ask though. So, when you was at this party, um, did the dip suck? <laughs> <laughs> the you know it's funny so the the whole catering for you know this was like a this is the 90s where they like wasted money um and so my mom my parents remember this the food that they actually catered was great they had like really good food but the kids didn't want to eat the really good food they also like brought in mcdonald's and like kids would eat mcdonald's but like parents would have like filet mignon or something you know like lobster tail um <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. I don't even remember the food because I was like, I'm going to have chicken nuggets. <laughs> well, just because it moves on to uh, to Junior saying, well, the dip sucked, but bottom line, you're okay, Coach O'Shea, but can I get your brother's autograph? <laughs> just, you know, to stick it in. And then Patty and Danny sort of have a little flirt as they go down memory lane. And uh, Danny says, sleep tightly. And is sort of cringing at his own sort of, uh, you know, send off line which is again we've all done one of those um and we uh, skip back to kevin's family watching the home video back and uh you know becky is all that they have and then debbie uh kevin's older daughter is saying but what about junior and then we move into something else that wouldn't happen in 2020 oh yeah with kevin and uh butts spying on the kids uh from you know from a distance with binoculars well okay yeah it wouldn't happen today but the consequence could happen today completely yeah they um you know the what is it uh they notice oh a newbie says to uh it's like spies and then they notice them in the in the bushes and they call the was it the state police that's for yeah, he calls the state police rather than like the local police because I guess the local yeah. police are would be in cahoots with Kevin, so it was like an extra layer to know to go because as we know, Kevin is known, but he's not he's known in Urbania. It doesn't go statewide, yeah. so yeah, it's a good touch. What what did you make of this, Dom? Uh, again, it's it's um, I just thought it was a great moment that. Um sort of getting the the police involved and um danny putting on a voice and saying that the kids are really upset by it and then getting was it the little cowboy kid that gets to (laughs) cry um uh, and really really sort of hams it up (laughs) Uh, although i do there is the other line that the butts is saying he's like he's like wait they have the they have the uh the quarterback over there and the back the linebacker over there what they're, they're like like talking about where they're placing and kevin's like 
Plus, they're just standing around. <laughs> I love that line. It's so good. It's, it's, when uh, Danny's on the phone, so doesn't he say that they're in their underpants? Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just add that in. <laughs> it's brilliant. And it's just perfect little hijinks. Oh, I'll always love that. Uh, we then move through to Kevin in his home office, I'm guessing, and Karen's bringing him a sandwich. And this is where we find out that, you know, Danny called the state police rather than, you know, the local police. And, you know, now it's war. You know, it's it's going beyond what it was before. And we skip to uh, sort of like a training montage, but it's running parallel. So we have the Cowboys training, but also the Giants training as well. And it's sort of showing the... As I love to say, Dom, my favourite buzzword of the podcast, the juxtaposition of <laughs> of the two teams. Um, and then we get to Marcus um, kicking, and this is where you kick and it goes in. And then Jake completing the monkey bars. And so now we know it overdubbed. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then we move to the little giants doing the car wash. And this is where Becky and Junior start to flirt a little bit. And Butts arrives and he basically says, you know, you don't even belong on the same field as your brother. If I was like the mother the mother hen or something like that, I'd let them drown. Which I'm like, wow, Butts. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. You need to calm down a little bit there. And then gives him a good, he gets a good hosing by all of the kids and then this is where we again get another juxtaposition dare I say of where um, Junior is flirting or sort of playing around with Icebox but it's sort of like how it's a little bit rougher and uh, you know less dainty I guess for lack of a better word and then Debbie comes he's a cheerleader type and he's sort of like blowing sort of bubbles at her and stuff and it's all very gentle um, I mean, do you remember sort of washing cars? Um, yeah, that was actually fun. They just had music playing, like they they had that song playing, and they brought the cars in. There was, it was a uh, where, where did we film that? I don't remember where we filmed that. Just some parking lot somewhere. Um, but yeah, we're just you're kind of just wet all day, and then you're all well. The thing is, you're still kids, so you're actually already getting into water fights with each other so you know um you know <laughs> you can't you can't uh you can't get that out of them but yeah i mean it was that was a pretty quick one we all wanted that we all liked that song after that though car wash yeah a little on the nose but you know it was, it was a good time <laughs> there's a lot of crew that went home with clean cars that night yeah yeah probably yeah. <laughs> Well, we move to Icebox back home and she is trying on makeup and sort of being, you know, a bit more, uh, you know, girly, I guess, and sort of pretending to be a cheerleader. But then Danny comes in and she pretends that she's not wearing lipstick. It's actually a cherry Tootsie Pop. So again, it's sort of showing her battle of, you know, wanting to be an athlete and you know do some of the more traditional sort of boy stuff but still you know wanting to do the girl the girly stuff as well um mm -hmm. which as we said sort of at the top of the podcast is, is a really interesting uh you know sort of story really we move to the old the, the two old guys and they have the hot tip of uh, the new kid that's come to town and they synchronize <laughs> Uh, telling oh, Kevin and Danny at the same time, which is uh, brilliant. Like we said earlier, they're just sort of stirring up trouble to entertain themselves. Yeah, and then uh, what they... I, I find it interesting that Danny takes the go-kart. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, we get this, the sports car versus the go-kart, and we get this race to Spike's house, and, uh, and we get the sort of the freight train, I guess, that comes across, and... Yeah. Danny risks his life in that go kart to uh, to get across, and uh, there's no regard for level crossings at all. <laughs> yeah, well, and then also it's like okay, so he gets so then he gets to um, to Spike, and he's lying to the dad that he's uh, uh, Kevin O'Shea. Um, but then uh, I find what so Kevin O'Shea just never shows up at the house. <laughs> It just didn't arrive, just, yeah. Just, yes, <laughs> like, even if that freight train took, like, ten minutes to pass, <laughs> you know, he's like, nah, well, whatever, Danny's got it. <laughs> like, what? 
He just gave up. Why would he gave that? up on that kid. Yeah. Well, there's some great lines in here. I mean, we're introduced to Spike, like his sort of like come from uh, Skynet as like a new Terminator model. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite line from this bit is, "I massage his hamstrings with fabricated milk." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know what that does. I, that was such an interesting line, but I was like, what is, what does that mean? Like, what, <laughs> what do they do? Like, what, what is, what does that do to your hamstring? It's, um, it's really impressive, actually. It looks like the actor that's playing Spike, actually, it, it, he is actually doing pull-ups on that guy's arm. Like, I'm, I'm guessing that, or they did it, they just did the, they just put a, a something under his arm, and, under, you know, and he just stood on it and yeah. just pulled himself up. Yeah, crazy. Um, and I think the the guy that plays uh, Spike's dad is really good. Like he plays oh, that yeah. sort of you know uh, obsessive, over the top, into sports sort of character really well. Yeah. What was your first impressions of Spike, Don? It's Brian Haley, isn't it, that plays the dad? Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's in a like quite. A lot of things as well um i think he's in like baby's day out oh nice which uh, which is one of the most infuriating films in the world because it's, <laughs> it's a baby that's outsmarting these three adults and it drives me nuts but it's, it's quite funny and very silly um so he's, he's kind of a like a great kind of silly sort of comic actor that's in this type of film and plays that type of character um but when, when we met spike and he just started grunting i thought oh is this is this all he can do is this he doesn't isn't he's going to be one of these that doesn't talk and then when he starts talking about himself in the third person as well like he's he's just a complete like he can only refer to himself as spike i thought that was brilliant as well just what a great sort of character um like enhancement as it were <laughs> in that he's yeah. his dad we'll, we'll always talk about him like that so he always talks about him like that. Yeah, it's brilliant. I love all of that. We then get to uh, training. We have a new player. And then, like you said, Dom, if Spike's referring to himself in the third person. Spike's in Pee Wee Hell. And we're talking about uh, the annex... I can never say this properly. The annexation of Puerto Rico. No, am I saying that wrong? Yeah, no, that's right. Nice. Um and Spike doesn't want to play with a girl and we get this sort of uh, tension between them and uh, and uh, Jake has the great line of someone call 911 <laughs> yeah that scene we all have memories of that one because we did a million takes of that argument between the two of them it felt like a million it was it was probably like it was one of those like why did we do it so many times? And they would, they would re, they would do a different angle. I think they, they just wanted a ton of angles for it. But we did a ton of takes as well as a ton of angles. And by the end, uh, they had to tell all the kids because we had heard the argument so many times. We were mouthing along to the line, <laughs> and so they had to tell us not to mouth along because they could see us. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's that's a pivotal part of the film, I yeah. guess. Um, so, but yeah, interesting that that one, you know, was more laborious, I guess, than some of the others. With Danny saying, you know, with this guy on the team, we have an actual chance of winning. So this is sort of showing that Dan, Danny is sort of, his stance is beginning to change and he's actually becoming more focused on winning than he is necessarily on the fact that, you know, we just want to play, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then Kevin and Becky uh, are at the diner, and this was uh, the scene that, that you sort of touched on earlier a bit, Marcus, with this is where, and you, Dom, as well, where Kevin is uh, showing his, you know, he is a good uncle, and, you know, he's saying, actually, don't be so hard on your old man, you know, and, you know, he, he it's not that he necessarily, and Becky's saying, he, it's not that he wants to win, he just wants to show he isn't scared of you, and talking about Debbie liking Junior, and, Probably, you know, Junior would want a cute girl, not a teammate. So he is sort of manipulating her a little bit. But then we do yeah. get the nice line of, do you think I'm pretty? No, I think you're beautiful. So it is a great scene to, you know, lighten us up to Kevin a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, what what did you make of this, Dom? Did this change how you perceived Kevin? I I really thought when he goes, uh, when she's when she says, "Oh, am I am I pretty?" and he says, "No," that he's going to turn around and leave. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, you're just like, what an asshole! And yeah, like, but this this guy's going to be a dick and just walk out because he wants to win that game. And then when he says, "No, it's because you're beautiful," I thought, "Ah, oh, okay, actually." He's decent, really. So I, I couldn't from the, it's kind of from that point on. I couldn't really work out who the villain might not be the right word, but who the antagonist was supposed to be for the film because it's it's meant to be him, but he's kind of too nice with it. I guess it kind of turns into being Spike in a way. Yeah, yeah. so Spike and Spike's dad. Yeah. Well, we then move through to. The little giants are training um, and spikes, you know, you call this a team. And then Kevin and I put here Mr. Spike because I was unsure of his name. Um, yeah. Do we know his name in the movie? Oh, uh, it, uh, Hammersmith, isn't it? Ha- Harris, did you say? Like Hammersmith, so it's Mr. Oh, Hammersmith. Mr. Hammersmith. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Cool. So, so Kevin and Mr. Hammersmith arrive and they take Spike. You're a cowboy now. Um, you know, I can't wait until tomorrow. So the game is actually tomorrow, which is like short time here, you know. Um, <laughs> and then we we get into a little little bits of arguments here between the the little giants. Um, someone says, "Shut up, Junior! You're so good, it makes us sick." I think that's Zoltek that says that. And then Becky Icebox says, "Hey, you know, if it wasn't for him." Oh, she, you know, she says something like, you know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even have a team. And then Marcus, you say, can you remember your line? Um, If you wouldn't stop drooling over, maybe you should stop drooling over Junior and play some football. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good memory. There's a good... Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a good zinger. You said what the whole audience was thinking. Get it together, Becky. We've <laughs> yeah. got a game tomorrow. Um... So that's great. And then, out of nowhere, Rad kicks Zoltek. No, sorry. Yeah, Rad kicks Zoltek. And then you say, nice kick. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then out of left field, really, uh, Rad is sort of walking uh, along or riding his little bike along a road. And he gets asked by directions by none other than John Madden. And they come and train with the little giants and you have Emmett Smith there and, you know, these other guys that we don't really know because we're British. But, I mean, it seemed like... Yeah. We right. seem like that. You know Emmett Smith because he won Dancing with the Stars. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, that must have been a big deal, right? Like, was, was that a good time, like, training with those guys? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it was... They were all really nice and uh, they all did a good job because... Uh, what was it? Uh, was it Jerry Rice? I think he was it. Was it Emmett yeah. Smith. Yeah, Emmett Smith, Bruce Smith, yeah. Tim Brown, and Steve uh, Emptman. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I mean, uh, Emmett Smith was in his prime then, so he was probably the most famous. So I think we all knew who he was, um, like even you know being actors. Uh, yeah, and John Madden, you know, he had all the video games. Um, but uh, yes, uh, Emmett Smith was was really nice. I mean, he was a really nice guy, um, you know, hung out with the kids, talked to us. They all did. But, you know, like, he was also the smallest, so he uh, wasn't as scary looking. Right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, that's uh, – I think all the parents were more excited because, they, you know, unless your kid really followed football, um, some of them were kind of on the the other side of their um, – uh, you know, on the, not on their way down, but they were all, you know, kind of – they had time to make a movie. Right, right. Yeah. This this might sound silly, but what what surprises me is you you were, Simon, you were saying earlier on that this is there was a link to the Dallas Cowboys because obviously the the kids team are called the Cowboys, you know, and advertising the new kit and stuff like that. But I think only one of them played for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, interesting. Well, the other three played for other teams within the NFL franchise, but not 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 the Cowboys. Yeah, I, I thought think... I'd add that in. I might have just ruined the podcast for a <laughs> You are an embarrassment today. I've told you twice. <laughs> well, that's quite a good fact. No, that, <laughs> that, is, no, that is good. I mean, maybe, maybe it's just like 
who was around. Yeah, or like you're saying, Marcus, like, you know, who doesn't need to go to training, you know, this week? <laughs> yeah. Who can mad, mad and pick up on the way? But, um, it looks like it's a great time. And then it's something to be said about the whole movie is it's enjoyable because it looks like all of the kids are having a good time, like, you know, even, you know, as actors and everything. Um, and it helps, you know, to enjoy watching it. Um, so it's great to hear you say that, you know, you have all of these great memories. We get some some great lines here. You know, football is 80% mental and 40% oh. physical. <laughs> I love that. Zoltec doesn't get the math. Yeah. <laughs> That's classic. Um, we also get John Madden talking to Newbie about the, uh, I'm going to say it again, the annexation of Puerto <laughs> Rico. <laughs> Uh, and we get the intimidation game faces, and then John Madden gives uh, Danny some advice, and just saying, you know, good luck, just go out and give it your best. You just have to stick together, you know. And uh, at the same time, again, to use my favourite word, to juxtapose this scene, we have Kevin giving the Cowboys the do or die speech. You know, it's win or cry. And this might be my favourite line in the movie. Is as Kevin's giving this speech, Spike's dad comes in and Kevin says, do or die, win or cry. And he goes, go, baby, go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. It's so brilliant. Like, I, like in my head, I really hope that he ad-libbed that, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, yeah. Tomorrow on that field, it's do or die. Win or or cry go baby go and they're saying you know we're gonna crush the little giants into smithereens and uh we then move to icebox by the lake and junior coming up and they have this whole sort of kissing conversation and we get a great line in here that and i don't know if you guys knew this but you can't actually get a job without kissing <laughs> yeah right you have kids without kissing yeah but you can't get a job <laughs> um <laughs> You know what I also heard? I think Shauna said on the uh, the audio commentary for the movie, because I think they released it on DVD. I think she said that uh, the um, the birds that fly out when Junior like when she goes towards Junior to kiss him and he falls over and the birds fly out. I think she said those were like they had a an animal wrangler. Like those were trained birds. <laughs> I was like, oh okay, it seems like such a. a very specific detail but uh it works you know it does something yeah it's a it's a good scene it's a good moment how, how did you find this dom as a first time viewer this is when they're sitting on like the edge of the boat yeah tonsil hockey spit spit yeah. swappers <laughs> it's it's classic uh girl wants to kiss boy boy doesn't know what to do uh kind of scene <laughs> and boy doesn't understand his emotions as well <laughs> our teenage years the confusion <laughs> yeah. well it's uh it, also uh icebox is quite um you know open and honest basically saying you know i bet if i was like you know the cheerleader type she'd want to learn the kiss with me which i think also goes to making her just that much more of a prolific character because not only is she into sports and all this other stuff. She's also open with her emotions, you know? So, yeah, really well-written character, I would say. Great. So, the... <laughs> the... Uh, so, da, 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 da. Becky then goes to Kevin's house to see Aunt Karen, because she, this is where we later find out she's getting the cheerleading outfit, so uh -huh. things are changing. Danny is then practicing in the mirror and is uh, practicing, you know, being at the game. You're going to throw me out? I'll throw you out. I'll throw your mother out. <laughs> this is brilliant. And then Becky enters, and then we get the. What's in the box? No, they don't do that. Yeah. But, <laughs> it's not Gwyneth Paltrow's head. I'm sure it's not. But um, well, we get this scene about, you know, my little fallback. And, you know, well, mum didn't call me her little fallback. She called me her little princess. And, you know, and we get the real deep cut of mum didn't quit. She just found a better team. Yeah. 
Ouch. That one, that scene is always like, it, yeah, it's the it's the saddest scene in the movie, but I can't help but laugh. We all laugh because uh, she trips on her way up the stairs. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. Oh, yeah. I, I wonder if we're all like, is that genuine or? Yeah, I don't think, I don't know if Sean ever told us if she meant to trip on the way up the stairs or if it was just an accident and that's what they wanted. I, we, uh, we'll have to ask her. I, I actually, um, I think it's actually a little bit more endearing because. I had moments as a kid where I'd say something that I thought was so dramatic and then I'd be like, aha, and then I'd storm out and then I would like, you know, walk into the door or walk into a wall or something. Yeah. So it was a little bit more realistic. But so you noticed that as well, Dom? Yeah, I saw her trip and I thought, oh, I wonder if that's intentional or or an accident. But I always, I always think if the director didn't want it, they would have stopped, they would have refilmed it, and they would have, you know, it would have been take two or take three. Oh, yeah. So they, yeah. they obviously, they obviously quite happy with her to trip and then carry on. So, yeah, fair enough. Nice. Well, we just, so we find out Becky's not going to play tomorrow. Um, we get a nice little cut of Hayden practicing at home with his dad, a bit more talking to his hands, which is brilliant. And then, Marcus, we yeah. get one of, Maybe your most famous scene, or one of the most famous scenes <laughs> of the movie, of you doing the face pain. Yeah. So like that, they um, basically it was like, yeah, I think we didn't like maybe two takes because you know you can only you can only do it so much. Um, but they, uh, so Dwayne is just off camera, and uh, he's telling me where to put the, uh, you know, where to put the 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 eye makeup and uh uh yeah they, we we put it on on the eyes like make a mean face you're mad you know you're getting in the into the you're getting your game face on and then he starts telling me now put it on your forehead <laughs> and so i don't really i don't really know what he's telling me to do i didn't know this was what we were doing so yeah i start just you know just off camera he's just telling me where to put it at one point he goes now put on your eyelashes and i was like i you can't I can't do that. I'm just, just thinking to myself, I can't do it. It's like, oh, he meant eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I put on my eyebrows. And yeah, it was just, it was a fun time. You don't get to, as a kid, you don't get to just be, you know, like I'm going to cover my face and this stuff and no one's going to get mad at you, you know. Well, it's the little grunts that you do that I love that makes it. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 on sad note, that was in post. We did that. We did the grunts in... Uh, in a, a booth later that's like that's okay it doesn't shout out for me yeah. because at least it was still oh, okay. intentional <laughs> so and now i just think of you in a booth just going mm, mm. yeah <laughs> it's brilliant i really i really i really enjoyed that bit actually it really made me laugh all well, of a sudden, <laughs> you're, you're putting this like bit of like eye makeup on, on on your cheeks and trying to look mean yeah. and, and angry and then all of a sudden we move away and then we come back and you've got a beard and you just drawing it on your eyebrows. Yeah. Like, this is fantastic. <laughs> we get uh we get Jake's flexing, which I'm assuming is like an he's doing like an Arnie impression, saying he's getting yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, nice. You know the the thing is so like uh we we went to a, a hockey game out here with at, at in LA and uh on the like jumbotron they you know they're like get pumped up right and they're like trying to get the everyone in the the place you know like screaming and they show a clip from little giants of, of todd no way but we, we, we did yeah. the, but, and they didn't know that he was there was it just by coincidence yeah no they didn't know that he was there <laughs> that's amazing oh, so cool <laughs> did he like that or, or was oh yeah i mean it, it's it's fun it, no one's it's uh you know it, it, no one's making fun of him you know it's uh it's to get people pumped yeah up, you know? no i love it that's brilliant and we get uh danny leaves out uh becky icebox's cheerleading uniform because you know he is a good dad he understands really and he got a bit carried away and you know and we get to the stadium and it's actually called kevin o'shea park so <laughs> Kevin Kevin <laughs> runs deep in this town. It's got great attendance. We've got a marching band. And then, as you said earlier, Dom, we've got... Um, did you say Harry Shearer is the announcer? Yeah. 
I just sort of knew that he was like something to do with The Simpsons, right? That so he he does like loads of the voice. So he's like Smithers and um, oh, he's honestly he's loads of them. Which yeah, brilliant. And we get to the locker rooms and uh, the cowboys have a priest coming in to say a prayer, but the the giants are like chanting in the uh, you know next door and getting pretty like rowdy and pumped up and confident. Insults through the vent. And then Spike sort of turns into a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but his dad's holding him with no problem. Yeah. Oh, and he's like, uh, yeah, just th- you, that's it. Uh, uh, take that out on the first guy you hit on the field. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> I love that. I love all of that. Um, and then uh, Becky enters as a cheerleader to everyone's, like, you know, shock. And the look on uh, Junior's face is is perfect. It like completely face drops. Um, and then this is the time where Danny unveils the new uniforms, which are known as the Death Shrouds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, they've got na- they've got your names on them. Yeah. So the guys at the morgue can identify the bodies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's Todd's accent coming out there. <laughs> Which is brilliant. Uh, like, you remember filming these locker room scenes? Like, were they done sequentially? So were they actually before the game? Because I imagine the actual game must um, have taken a lot of filming. Oh, yeah. No, that was that was a lot. Well, the other thing was, so they had... Because we're all kids, so they had us, and then they had stunt doubles, and then they had, like, a second set of stunt doubles. Wow. So that when they're doing the scenes where you can't even see us, you know, if they get hurt, you, you know, you, it's not one of us getting hurt. Um, and, uh, but then, so you'll see some scenes where it's like, if you watch it, um, you're like, the giants look like really good. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they know what they're doing. They're in sync with each other. And you're like, Oh, that's not the, that's not them. There's one where my, like my, uh, crouched position looks like, like a professional. And I'm like, Oh, that's cause that's the stunt double. <laughs> So we then move to uh, the Cowboys running through the banner and then the Giants just bouncing back and not even making it through the banner, um, which is brilliant. Yeah, because they put the two smallest people up for it. Yeah, I thought that. It's like, this is never going to work. Um, uh, I, I actually thought the same as well. I thought the Cowboys have absolutely smashed through there. So I, I, I said to myself, what, one or two things are going to happen. They're going to be wrapped up in it so the whole team will be wrapped up in in the banner or or they'll, they'll run around it or something like that they won't go through it, it they'll end up avoiding it somehow classic moments but we then get to the coin flip uh but the microphone is picking up what kevin and danny are saying to each other so the crowd is sort of able to hear you know uh danny's side of this like how kevin sort of treats him um to sort of get people on the giant side i guess and then they end up raising the stakes by betting their businesses against each other <laughs> because why not why not we then yeah, you'll always have a job at danny o'shea chevrolet <laughs> <laughs> classic uh we then get kick off which is your turn marcus to kick you know kick the ball in but instead you kick johnny in the nuts and we get a pound of aunt betty's nut butter that was a lot of fun though that was more fun for me than it was for JP. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, he, he had, I think he had, no, he had, a, he had a cup on. Um, and uh, yeah, I just kicked him in the thigh, you know, but uh, it was, uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's not, it was, that's the, the, the thing is there's no reaction. It's just him getting uh, 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 kicked in the thigh and then he has to pretend that he got <laughs> kicked in the balls um <laughs> but yeah no that was a that was that was a lot more fun for me i was that was like that's my one thing i'm gonna be very excited about that <laughs> yeah as most you know young boy would be getting to kick someone yeah, in the yeah. balls in a you know in a movie yeah. your jersey you're number 63 and you are the toe um did you have any say of what jersey number you'd get was there any reason that it was 63 uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. Sixty-three doesn't have any. 
uh, significance to me. But all, I mean, the other thing is so about, you know, talking about laziness with the uh, naming. Uh, okay, well, if you put my real first name and you put the toe in the middle and then you say my real last name, it it's a much better uh, um, name. Marcus the Toe, Toe G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which so means... Am I just a version of my real self in this world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. So uh, <laughs> we then get several sort of like, you know, hijinks sort of moments. Uh, like we get the farting out of your mouth and talking out of your butt moment, which is... Yeah, that was that was very interesting because uh, <laughs> he does. And I was like, that's not possible. But, <laughs> all right. <laughs> which, yeah, there you go. Uh, we get... Timmy, the cowboy kid's like uh, running away from Spike and he gets trampled into the floor and gets knocked back to the second grade. I mean, yeah. Dom, how did you find this sort of stuff watching it for the first time? The, uh, the, the talking through the, what's that I was going to say, toll, uh, was a shock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the, the, the kid, the, the cowboy kid getting imprinted into the ground. Like, I actually really like that. It's getting sick like, absolutely trampled on and stepped all over it's really good and it was like about a year and a half ago maybe maybe less i am um, a friend of mine is a really really big nfl fan and has tried to get me into it so I've, I've been trying to learn um as much nfl as possible so even even watching films like this and because there's still you know some of the terminology in the film and you know what um positions people play and stuff like that so even having a brief understanding helps you kind of know what the hell's going on in 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 that scene as well which is good as as fun as it is though watching all these crazy things happen a kid getting kicked in the nuts and one getting slammed into a field and and basically being buried um another talking through his rear end and all all sorts of crazy things happening is, is brilliant well, we get the the next bit is uh, we're in a huddle and we get we're, they're reading the plays off of Timmy Cowboy Kid's stomach, which is funny. Yeah, and uh, and then Tad gets the ball and he's just running around, just shouting at the sure. referee to blow the whistle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is brilliant, and he gets trampled off of off of the screen. Next, another part is Tad's holding on the back of Spike's jersey as and you know stretching it out and mm-hmm. we move through to Hayden with his firm grip um, and he claps his hands together at the end of the yeah. huddle <laughs> and then uh, you know can't catch the ball which is is brilliant like do you remember uh, this sort of stuff when you were filming all of this? Oh, oh yeah yeah no so he had I think they had. To make it look stretchy, they put little bits of uh, latex, like, you know, kind of in a rubber band shape in his fingers. So he claps it, and then when he tries to open it, you know, the, the latex looks like it's sticking together, and it's uh, it's stretching. But yeah, uh, Troy, who was uh, Hanan, he and I were like uh, trailer mates, you know, so we, you know, each kid had kind of like a little a room to get changed and stuff. And so he, we were always next to each other. Um, so we were always we'd always open up the partition and and like hang out, but yeah, his his was interesting because he had all the like the um, you have to do continuity with costumes and stuff, but his costume was the only one that had a real particular like um, here's how it's supposed to look because when he sticks it to his jersey, um, you know it, it gets all you know the, whatever that color was the like the tar looking color like black goo. Yeah, that that goo. So you know, his his was the only one that looked different from scene to scene. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a uh, it, it was that was we were always interested in how they did the special effects because you know we're kids and so we want to know. And it was like there's a certain point where you're a little disappointed. You thought you know like to a point you're like I thought they were just gonna get real sticky things, and you know make him hold on to it or you know make it make it stick. But you're like oh it's just it's just rubber bands, essentially, and oh, that's not as exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we then get to the next part where Spike's saying to Jake, I'm going to rip your head off. So Jake sort of, uh, you know, gets himself into his pads and then he just rips his helmet off, which yeah. I remember uh, really liking that as a kid. That's uh, 
Good times. And then that takes us to half <laughs> that takes us to half time. And then this of course gets to you know, the big turning point in the movie where all of the giants are deflated and they're saying, you know, put us on the injured list. And then this is where we get the wonderful just one time speech. Um, do you remember filming this? Because this must have uh, been kind of tricky to film in terms of there's a lot of there's dialogue from different characters and so on and so forth. Yeah, I don't remember this being that that difficult. Um, you know, because we're all we're all sitting, we're all calm and sad, and uh, I think it was just there was if anything, you know, like there was just kind of like, well, who's going to have this line and who's going to have that line? You know, they all, all of course, arranged before the day of. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was it was a scene with, you know, Rick Moranis, who's our coach, you know, and, and like I said, we didn't really see him that much. So it did really feel like a, it, at this point in the shoot in real life, it, it was starting to drag. You know, uh, I think school was starting back up again. And, you know, like, you know, the kids, we were just always together and, you know, it's just going to get kind of tense and, you know, you can feel it from the adults that were falling behind. Things aren't going as they're supposed to. Um, and so, you know, it wasn't hard to do this scene because we were all kind of worn out in, in general. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, this scene was, um, yeah, there was a lot of talking and a lot of, a lot of scenes, a lot of cuts, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't anything that was hard to do because we were all we were all kind of there already. We're all kind of a little tired. <laughs> um, and uh, but you know the thing is everyone gets a, a really good line in that and everyone gets a good moment. Um, so it really felt like a a shared. It was it was a shared experience. You you have a great line in this, but instead of putting you on blast, Dominic, can you remember what Marcus's line was in this scene? Oh, do you know what? Do you know what's really annoying is that I was thinking this whole time, I I can't remember who he, who he overcame, who 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 he beat, and I was desperately trying to think, and I knew you were going to ask me that. I'm such a disappointment <laughs> to everyone, all our all our listeners. I really want to apologise for Dominic. Um, he's usually, <laughs> you know, just... you might want to think about getting another co-host. I, um... <laughs> if you're available, you know, between shooting yeah, and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I hear there's this. I see YouTube videos with this guy named Graham Norton. Maybe you can get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Graham Norton, um, treasure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, he, uh, it was something about a uh, marine. So you you beat so and so, but he's a marine. Roger chickened out. He's a marine. Yeah. Loved it. See, that's what happens when you do <laughs> research, Dom. <laughs> oh, okay. When we when we pick a film that I've seen like twenty to thirty times, then then we'll see, my friend. <laughs> then we'll see. No, to to be real, you've you 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 have you've got a crazy schedule right now, so you know, just uh, happy, grateful you got to watch it all, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, it's another great line in here that uh, Danny says. He says, whoever said you had to be good to play football? You know, you play football to have fun. And that's, again, just reinforcing the, the whole backbone of the movie. And, you know, you may lose or you may not do it 99 times out of 100, but that still leaves. Come on, Dom. One time. <laughs> which i love and i'd be lying to you if i say that sometimes i don't just watch that scene on youtube moving on uh, <laughs> uh so we get to the second half and uh this time you know the giants are hyped up and talking trash and uh we managed to gain one yard which is brilliant and the families and the parents are all into it and uh jake has a little dance it's it's good times um <laughs> yeah and julia he he makes a lot of uh, a lot of ground and uh tad says i've written here tad says i'm going to die oh he gets the ball he's like i'm gonna die i'm gonna die <laughs> and then he scores a touchdown and then tad's dad in the uh in the audience or in the crowd, he's like loving it. It's like my son scored a touchdown. My son, to like I love, yeah. I love all of that. Um, Dom, any emotion or no? 
Uh, well, there there was there was joy. There was there was there was no tears. You you want tears from me? You're desperate for me to cry, and it, it's not going to happen. I'm afraid. <laughs> what I did like is uh, Kevin's wife in the stands rooting for the Giants, not not oh, rooting yeah. for the Cowboys. That was that was good. And he gives her a look, and he's yeah. like, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. She sits down. Doesn't she stop? And then later she's cheering him. That's it. She's like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So the the first time she gets caught, she's like, "Oops, sorry." Yeah, go Cowboys. And then later yeah. on, it's like, ah, "Who cares?" <laughs> but we then move to your big moment, Marcus. Are you going to be able to kick the field goal? And you do it, and then you have the great line. I I did it. Right. And then you just fall over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Although people have pointed out, it's like, but actually you had to make every single extra point after every touchdown mm. in order for the team to win. So uh, true. I, I did it again and again and again. But those you were did it several team. times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just kept doing it. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Can you, can you remember the score at that point? Was it just uh, six or seven at that point? It was 21-7. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I remember that. This is where Mr... Well, did you say it was Hammersmith? Yeah. Yeah, Spike's dad basically then says, OK, you take Junior Floyd out of this game. And uh, he does. He uh, Whilst the ball's not even in play, he gives him spinal damage by the looks of it. Um, <laughs> but this, again, is a good character moment for Kevin because, you know, he says, you know, if your kid pulls another stunt like that, you know, you and him are out of here. And he says, well, I thought you wanted to win. And he says, not like that. So it shows that, you know, he is a, a good sport. Well, this is, this is, like I was saying earlier, he's he's not he's not the villain. Uh, uh, but Spike uh, is becomes the villain. Spike's dad becomes the villain here. Yeah, this is this is the, the the kind of official changeover of of who the antagonist is. Yeah, he wants to win the correct way, not by not by cheating and not by you know uh, being a bad person. Exactly. Exactly. Well, this is where then Spike is sort of walking off of the field and he smiles at Icebox and sort of really you know flaunting it in her face. And I noted that in this scene, in this moment, he looks a little bit like a little younger version of Biff Tannen from Back to the Future. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good. It's it. That's the smile. That's the like, such a, a eating grin. That's the. <laughs> that's it. We haven't mentioned the uh, the silver tooth at any point either, have we? Oh yeah, silver tooth. I'm assuming that wasn't real, like to him in real life, right? I think that was just. I have this feeling it was just foil. I don't even know if they made it an actual like cap. They they probably did, made a, a cap tooth for him. That's cool. That would be a cool memento to keep, you know, for him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would it? <laughs> <laughs> like the shirt and the helmet, yeah. But the <laughs> weird little tooth cap. No, you're all right. The tooth. You can have that. <laughs> I uh, I broke my finger uh, a while ago, and I had to have surgery on it, and I had to. Um, have a wire put into it um and then they took the wire out and you know once my finger had mended and whatever and they were trying to throw it away and i was like no i want that and i have it somewhere so you know there you go <laughs> it's holding cables together somewhere in your head <laughs> you know just living my life so um this obviously really frustrates uh icebox becky so then we enter the hybrid of Becky and Icebox, which is brilliant. And we get this little scene of, you know, saying to her dad, call me Icebox, and then saying to Junior, call me Becky. And this is going to show that she can be what she can just be herself. She doesn't have to fit into any of these boxes. She doesn't have to be, you know, a, an athlete or have to be a cheerleader. She can just be whatever she wants to be. And it's a beautiful message for the movie. So when she comes back onto the field and she faces up against Spike, do you know what Spike calls her? Go ahead. Do you know the answer? I, go, I want you to have your moment. It's ice chest. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, is that is that sexist or is that just like, you know, he, like an ice box, but now it's an ice chest? Oh, my God. I didn't even think about the, the ice box. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. I never even put that together. That's how naive my brain is. <laughs> Wait, Dom, did you know this about the bo- ice box? Yeah. Oh my god. That, now, now the movie because, is different um, for me. No, well, now I think the other thing is I don't know if you guys. <laughs> so, the whole ice box thing in general is because there was a football player called the Fridge. Yeah. And then, you know, what's smaller than the fridge? Well, the ice box. <laughs> and then, yeah. Crazy. Okay, so ice chest. Yeah. So what are we saying is was ice chest going over the line, or we think that's okay? I don't know. Dom, you. I think that they could have figured. They probably could have figured something else out, unless it is supposed to be sexist, as well as you know, demean. It, it's coming from the villain, so it could be kind of kind of mean. He calls her a pom pom at some point as well. You know, if it's just yeah. you know whatever. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so Icebox uh, hits Spike, and it's Giant's ball. At this point, Johnny's dad arrives and uh, we get a play for Johnny and uh, say, okay, we're going to pitch to Johnny. You can't pitch to Johnny. I'm Johnny. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, Zoltek farts to give him some room. (laughs) And then, you know, they say, just run to that guy. And he does. And uh, yeah, and he gets to his dad. And I love that moment. That's That's a great moment. Was this a tears moment? I was going to message you at this point when I was watching the, the film. And when it got to that point, I was like, I, I almost, I was almost certain that it would have made you cry. Well, um, it was very, very close to tears. I have marked in here <laughs> where I had my tears. So, uh, Marcus, in we did, like I said earlier, we said earlier, we did cool runnings. And during cool runnings, I oh. cried five times. Um, no shame in that. Little Giants, okay. I only cried once, um, but we're not quite there yet. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll we'll get there, and, and we'll we'll you can tell us, you can run us through your your tears. I feel like <laughs> maybe I have to cry more because I have to cry for me and for Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, <sorry. laughs> you're doing you're doing a world the world a great service, yeah. particularly me. Yeah. <laughs> so stop you killing you know delinquent kids throwing toilet paper around in supermarkets <laughs> yeah uh so we then get to the store of 21 14 so yeah so you must have scored another uh another field goal so congrats on that mm-hmm. and uh and then someone says something about uh jake's mum and he says don't be talking about my mama yeah <laughs> And then Jake's mum in the crowd is, uh, you know, discussing, oh, you know, football's so good for my son. And then I think he, like, tackles someone or something and she gets up and just goes crazy, which is a brilliant moment and really reminds me of my (laughs) mum. That was very much (laughs) like this at sporting events that I was probably not performing very very well at. So, good times. (laughs) And then we get the uh, the acid indigestion uh, tablets for intimidation. And I think you do a particularly great job in this, Marcus, because you actually look like you walked out of The Walking Dead at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was actually, you know, people were like, what, you know, you guys actually put, you know, act- antacids in your mouth. And we're like, no, it's what they had us do was brush our teeth. <laughs> And then just drool out the the foam. That's clever. From brushing your teeth. That's it. That's just uh, ruining every everybody's memory right here. Uh, just <laughs> uh, <laughs> brushing your teeth can help you intimidate people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cavities and uh, you know fillings are uh, yeah not good. Yeah. We then get the great payoff of uh, of Hainan getting getting uh, to to catch, and he visualised the ball turning into toilet paper, and he gets a great touchdown, and then he does some great leg dancing, and he actually looks directly at the camera as he's doing it. Oh yeah, I know, right? That's uh, Troy was not a uh, he was from I think South Carolina. I think he had I don't even know if he had done much acting before that, but uh, he was a he was a country boy. And I think he would. I think he. 
probably was the one who looked at the camera more often than anybody else. <laughs> well, I think it, <laughs> looking directly as at it as it's going up in the air. That's it. Yeah, it, it doesn't bother me <laughs> yeah. though because I kind of I try and imagine it as if like that's like the ESPN camera, you know. So yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> but guess what, Marcus? You must have kicked another field goal because now it's twenty-one, twenty-one. Yep. yep. <laughs> level playing field and at this point everyone's hanging on spike and then we get to less than one minute left patty comes down from the crowd and tells danny the play and obviously it's going to be the the play that he was telling the old guys earlier you know at the diner so perfectly foreshadowed in the writing tying it all together we can do it together in a great huddle they know the play slow motion icebox versus spike this is like Godzilla and King Kong. Can she stop him? <laughs> yes, she stops him. The ball doesn't go over the line. Yeah, Giants ball. Time out. Four seconds left. Junior's coming back into play. Put him in. Guess what it's time for? The annexation of Puerto Rico. Your mind, pom pom. No ball. Zoltek to Junior. Junior to Jake. Jake <laughs> runs into the pole. He scores. They win. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> is that how you remember it yeah exactly <laughs> spot on that's how i remember it <laughs> yep you sound just like harry shearer <laughs> <laughs> well we then get to uh you know the giants have won and then spike actually starts the clap so he's sort of you know trying to redeem himself and he actually pushes sean murphy to get him to clap and everybody else uh, Icebox and Danny hug. Danny asks Patty on a date. They kiss. Spike's dad actually cries. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Which is great. And then, like you said, uh, Kevin's wife, Karen, she's loving it. She starts the Giants chant in the, in the crowd. And guess what, guys? Here came my tears. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was so happy for you guys that you won, you know, and you were accepted, you overcame adversity, you did do it one time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Kevin and Danny then talk, you know, it's one town, one team, you know, could we combine the teams? Could there be two head coaches? You know, oh, I'll think about it. You're not actually going to hold me to that bet, are you? We can work this out. Well, what do you want? What did he want, Dom? I was like, we lost Dom. <laughs> no, I'm so, I'm so upset. <laughs> Dom, what did he want? <laughs> useless, useless. Sorry, Marcus. Again, I, I honestly, okay. I don't know. I don't know why. Come on, Dom, you got you this. The, the next thing was going to autoplay, so it got small because the credits were about to roll, and he <laughs> wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Two two head coaches, the joint head coach. Yeah. The the water and then I'm the lost. Water, no, 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 I'm the lost. water tower. Oh, the, oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. With their, both both their names on the water tower. Because that's all he wanted to be accepted. That is all. <laughs> and that's the end. And that is the little giants. What a movie! Was that like a cathartic experience for you, Marcus? How does it feel talking about it in that much detail? It was good. We could have um. I, I, we could have done that from the <laughs> we could have done that from the beginning. We all all share the same stories. Uh, it um it is it is interesting to like hear it talked about as like a you know like as a uh, a plot like here's here's the beats of the story. Like there's things that I feel like I miss. You know, <laughs> I was like, wait, that that did happen. Um, I was like, is it? Once you guys brought, it, I was like, is junior like is it because he's a teen and doesn't know what he wants like what it's like i have to put myself back in that that headspace um of what what is it to be a child <laughs> i'm glad we took you down a deep path today I'm glad. it was a yes <laughs> well you have been so gracious with your time and we can't thank you enough i mean where where can people you know follow you on social media and all of that good stuff I most I mostly do stuff on uh, on Instagram. I post mostly pictures of my cats. Um, uh, that's uh, at um, Instagram at the to the underscore Toji, T O J I. 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, the hopefully this uh, TV show comes up. People can watch me on that. It's called Prospect. Or as of now, it's called Prospect. Who knows what it's going to uh, go up. And if anyone's uh, looking to binge uh, something, uh, one show I did a few years ago, which uh, is a very interesting show and it was a lot of fun to work on, was called uh, Patriot. And it's kind of like a dark comedy about the uh, American intelligence, quote unquote, intelligence uh, operations. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's, where, that's where I'm at now. And just hoping everyone gets out of this uh, COVID-19 thing safe and sound and everything can go back to almost normal. But it was never normal. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, True. we'll uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description uh, with your like Instagram handle on there, and obviously, if there's anything that we can be putting out there in the future, you know, stay in touch, and we can, you know, sort of promote things through our channels. And uh, we're just so grateful for you giving up your time uh, again. Though uh, we're massive fans, and uh, we're just so grateful to have this opportunity to to talk to you about it and. Thank you for, uh, you know, for playing along. Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, that, that was, uh, that was fun. I, I, I don't often get to hear other people's like, uh, opinions and or interpretations of, of <laughs> the movie because, because yeah, I mean, I, I, it exists in a bubble for me, you know? And I was, I was like, oh yes, misogyny. Like that's, I was like, I've never th- seen it through the lens of today. I've only looked at it. It's like, Oh, when I lived that, it was this way. But it's it's much, much more interesting. I was like, yeah, I never thought about you can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the on the podcast today, uh, and for your time. Uh, and you know, Simon has been a a fan of the film ever since it came out in 1994, and I'm a, a new fan of the film. So thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to. Uh, get to know you and, and your experiences of it and, and just get to know you a bit better so thank you thank you well wish you all the best for everything going through um that's that's stay in touch and like i said we'll be supporting you from here so uh yeah good luck with everything and yeah thank you so much for everything all right thank you all right bye so that was amazing great fun and uh really grateful to marcus for spending the time it's now time to talk about our judgment. So, Dom, of the primary cast, who was your favourite performer? I think from the main cast, my favourite character is uh, probably Kevin O'Shea. Uh, I really like his character arc, which is something we talk about quite a lot on our podcast. Uh, and he goes from being super popular, Mr. the kind of Mr. Everybody of the town. Everybody goes to him and he's very well known and he's famous and um and he's he's great to be in this kind of villain character to then being a good guy at the end and i actually quite quite enjoy him uh, as a character and the actor as well um is brilliant so ed o'neill is is great and in modern family i think he's fantastic so yeah really 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 good actor and uh, great to see him in this film what about yours well, I hate to be boring, but I will have to say the same. Uh, Ed O'Neill, he is brilliant. He has great line delivery. He has great um, moments of softness and, you know, also remaining as the antagonist, really. And uh, I think it's, yeah, performed really well. What about your favourite uh, performer of the secondary cast? Why, why don't we change it a little bit and say, like, all of the kids besides, like, Icebox and Junior, all of them can count as secondary cast, even though, you know, they're not really, but just uh, you got more of a repertoire to pull from. So I, I really like films with uh, like really big groups of kids like this. So if you look at, if you take a film like The Goonies in the 80s, and we talked about the Mighty Ducks kind of being the Goonies of our time, like or more of our era because it's that kind of like I mentioned earlier that ragtag group of kids that become good they kind of you know overcome adversity and and they push through and they battle through and they and they win at the end uh so it, like credit to all of the 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 kids in it the the actors that that played those kids cuz um th- they're in a similar situation they they're playing these characters and these kids that probably weren't particularly sporty or, or very good at 
playing Amer- you know American football um but they have to go out there and give it a go and you know really join in and get involved so I actually think all of the kids would win my vote what about what about you what about you what do you think I'm gonna say Spike's dad and simply for the line of go baby go <laughs> I love that line I can't wait to be cutting that in in, in this <laughs> podcast the actual sound bite go baby go it's so brilliant um so i'd say him now what about the judgment of your rating so on our podcast we do two ratings we do the subjective personal nostalgic rating of you know what it means to us and then our objective watching it today in 2020 rating so dom what are your two ratings for the little giants so my subjective rating so what what it means to me i'd probably have to give it a four Wow. Well, I was going to say, it's it's difficult because they're, they're kind of the same thing, the ratings for you this time, I guess. But saying that, having now spent almost four hours talking about it with a cast member, maybe that adds something special about the film. You know, if anyone ever talks to you about, oh, have you seen The Little Giants? Then you're going to be yeah, I've seen it and done a whole, you know, uh, dissection of it with a cast member. So I don't know if that adds in at all. I mean that that is that is fantastic and that is it's a great part of it and I really enjoy. But that makes you know me think of the podcast side of it. it gives me that nostalgic feeling of of doing the podcast. So the podcast gets the film, a ten. Yeah, the podcast gets a ten. But uh, and having you know the the some of the actors involved so having Marcus involved was was fantastic and I, I really enjoy talking to him and, and hearing what he has to say and uh, the stories that he has um, but the film itself and, and kind of how it resonates with me and, and you know as much as I appreciate the, the plot and the characters and stuff like that just it didn't really have I don't have that connection to it because it wasn't a film I watched as a kid it wasn't a film I, I grew up loving so for me it's it's a four i'm afraid i understand what about what about yours then i i'm assuming we're going we're going with a high number on this one again the subjective rating we, we've been going i've been choosing movies that are in my hall of fame you know for what they mean to me subjectively so i have to give it the straight 10 because this is one that i watched on repeat over and over again as a child um objectively I, I'd still give it something high. It's very hard for me to detach them, actually. But I'd give it, like, a seven, objectively. Um, which I know is probably still being uh, a bit kind. But I that's that's where I would sit with it. What about your objective rating? I, I think a, a 6.5. I think it's, it's not a bad film. It's got a good message. It's got a great cast. It's got some really good uh, child actors in it. Um, some that have gone on to do loads of other things as well, including Marcus, who, who's been in loads of stuff uh, and has done is some great voice work as well. Um, and like so some of the secondary cast has, has been brilliant in it as well. So, um, yeah, I think 6.5. I think that's, that's quite fair. Nice. Well, that is The Little Giants, which was great fun. But now... It is time to talk about what we're going to do on our next episode of the podcast. So we've actually already said throughout uh, this podcast, we've actually already spoiled what the next episode is. So, uh, you know, we won't pretend to, you know, hold it in some form of uh, suspense. But the next episode is Cool Runnings. And we have recorded it already. So we recorded them out of order just due to, you know, scheduling of having the guests come on. So it was a great episode. We did it with Raul D. Lewis, who plays Junior Bevel in Cool Runnings in the movie. So part of the 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 main Jamaican bobsled team. And he had some great insight, just like Marcus. It was great fun, great time. We found out so much about the movie and his experience and about him in general. It was awesome, right? It was fantastic. It's been great, you know, a great experience for us. Um, to talk about films that 
you know, we really enjoyed when we were a lot younger uh, and being able to talk to people that were in them. So uh, for you, especially with, with Marcus, because, you, you know, you rated Little Giants a 10 um, and have watched it forever. Uh, and then for both of us on Cool Runnings, which is great and getting a chance to, to talk to Raul about it, um, it's just fantastic. So it's it's great that we're, we're still fairly new to the the podcast game and, and we're getting these guys to, to come and talk to us so hopefully we can get some get some more get pick some great films and get some more great actors talking to us we're living our best podcast lives right now <laughs> absolutely well we've kind of like kept a uh like it's like it's almost like a slightly different podcast when it's just you and me it goes really off of the rails <laughs> when we yeah. we have to be on good <laughs> behavior when we have guests on That was The Little Giants. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can at themighty90s.com. You can send us suggestions of movies to do next, or if you want to just reach out to message us, then we'd love to hear from you. You can also hit us up on social media. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram at themighty90s or on Twitter at themighty underscore 90s. So please follow us. Send us some messages. Some people have already sent us messages and emails, um, which have been great, and they're saying some really, really nice things. So please uh, rate, review, and leave some comments, but be gentle. And wear gloves. Show me the honey. Steamboat Lily. Doot, doot. Don't want to raise your kids. I don't even like kids. His name is Robert Paulson. You're not even a has You're a never was. I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I'm gonna show you God does exist. I am invincible! Go, baby, go! Hans, Bobby, I'm your white knight.